Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> Good morning! Welcome to A Moment in Time with Taylor. Nick, you were the first comment of the broadcast coming in on Twitch. First and second comments of the broadcast. Thank you for commenting on Twitch because I never know how long it takes for Twitch to actually catch on to actually go live, so I usually wait longer than I have to. So, thank you, Nick. Nick, you were the first comment on Periscope, too. How'd you do that? <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, Eric. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, in March, you hit six consecutive months supporting this channel, which means that you're going to get a little gift from me. So uh, I will tell you more about that. I'll, I'll direct message you about that. But thank you so much for your continued support of the channel, Jimmy. And you just invited your followers. MVP right here. Hello, Eunice, Miko, Mar Maria. Hello, hello, hello. So yeah, March, February, January, September. I mean, sorry, December, November, October. Am I going backwards the right way? September. So since September, you have supported the channel every single month for six consecutive months. And I reward people for that. And there's actually six people already in March that have done that. And it's March 6th. So thank you guys so much. We have Jimmy Knapp, Vito, Dan on Fleek, Eric Fubar. Eric's in here too, right? Eric Moo! Hello, Encounters with Nature in the House. I shared their broadcast yesterday. Check them out. They have such, such awesome broadcasts that I love so much. Hey, Emma. Hey, Zen. Um, Sonam, Sonam 108, she hit her six months this time, and Arturo, Roadrunner. So you guys have all supported every single month since September. Thank you so much. You don't know how much that helps. Maybe you do, but it helps a lot. Hello, London. I can do Downward Dog. Hello, Peter. Welcome back. Yep, Eric. So I'm going to give you a gift, too. I'm going to give all six of you guys a little gift, and I'll, message, I'll be direct messaging you about that soon. KM, thanks for the super, first super hearts of the broadcast, I think. Were they the first ones? I think you already might have sent some. But thank you. There they go, little Yodas into the jar. Who saw them? I just realized that I didn't actually update this list for today, so this is yesterday's list. So if anybody's missing from this list, I apologize. Oh, Steve. Steve, yours won't be on here. I think that's probably it. And then anyone who expired today has a little extra time on here. Cash cannons, yes, good question, Colin. So Colin, these cash cannons have been extra fully loaded today. So they have four times as much cash in them as they usually do. Boom, so we're gonna have fun with those once we get 20,000 super highs. Good morning, Mike, one of our newest sponsors. Uh, he went over to femyoga.com, clicked support. Oh, and his name just went by on the screen just above here. Uh, so he's now a moderator, name on the screen. Did I say hi to you, Eunice? Hopefully I did. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for following me. Thanks for inviting your friends. We're going to do our unboxing now. Ta-da! Box! Alright. So let's start with the le least exciting stuff in here. There's only three things. But one is the microphone, obviously. 4X. Yes, 4X, Nick. 4X. Alright. So I bought some new makeup sponges. Real Techniques is the brand that I use. Real Techniques by Sam and Nick. Uh-oh, did I forget to turn off my autofocus? I think I did. But luckily, if I forget to turn off my autofocus from now on, it won't you won't hear it focusing in the microphone, which is amazing. A new microphone. Yes, yes! You can hear this microphone kind of sucks. I'm already kind of peeking it. Let me turn it down a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, it already wants to break. So, oh, Jimmy said this is what he uses too for his goth makeup. Jimmy, why haven't we done our goth scope? Did you get your cape? Hello, oh, Jim, how are you? Mike, thanks for the super hearts, getting us closer to that 20,000 mark that we need to hit to shoot off the cash cannons. And in case anyone cares about what these are for. <laughs> Just like a little sponge and then you put your makeup on and you go and you put it all over your face now it's dirty it's fine it's gonna get dirty because I'm about to go use it when I put makeup on today thank you Zen 
Hey, Woo, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Hey, Lucas on Twitch. All right, I'm going to show my goods. I also got a new charger. <laughs> Sorry, charger cord for my iPhone, which means I can get rid of this one. Because, oh, wait, I still have my desktop audio on. Dang. Because this one is looking pretty haggard. So do you guys go through chargers a lot? I don't understand what I do to them, but I always need new ones. So you can see my old one. See that? It's like broken right here. Mm -mm -mm. So then it would just, every time I moved my phone, it would like unplug and replug, unplug and replug. So I don't know what to do. What do you do with old wires that are broken? Give them to your husband. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Figure out what to do with that. Thank you, Marco. That's nice. Um, let's plug this guy in. And I got this stuff on Amazon. And I use Amazon Smile. 10 foot cord. Um, is it 10 foot? I'm not sure. Let's find out. You're excited, John? Yes! No, it's not 10 foot. It's like 5 foot. It's probably 6 feet. Dun, da, 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 not broken. And it's got this wire on it, which is what I use on my Android plug right here. So it's got like that threaded cord, which I think lasts a lot longer, but we'll see. Yeah, these are cash cannons. So, Sean, when I get 20,000 super hearts on this broadcast, I'm going to shoot off the cash cannons. And I have four times more cash in them than I normally do. So let's test it out. Plugging in. 91% charged. I love it. Thank you, China, for having awesome cheap products for me. Love you. Yes, Sean, I just answered your question, so I'm not going to answer it again. And the moment we've all been waiting for, the Yeti microphone. Ah! The Breda ones last longer. What kind of cord is it? Oh, okay, Jim. Uh, let's see. This is the the model number. I don't have a packing slip, which is odd. Does Amazon usually include a packing slip? So I just, if you just go on Amazon, search iPhone cord, iPhone charger. It came up in one of the, and then I sorted by price low to high, and I just grabbed this red one. Now, I, I like to have different colors because it's just easier to keep track. So I have like a blue iPhone one here, and I have a red one, and then I have the black and white Android cord, just so that I can keep straight if it's Android or iPhone because I have three phones. Um, you're welcome, Jim. Sorry I didn't have more details on that, but hopefully you'll find it pretty easy. Frenchie, thank you for those super hearts. Okay, let's just get rid of some of my dear, dear troll friends in the house. All right, so we have our microphone. Let's open it up. Oh, the chat's laggy. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, you know, I upgraded my internet yesterday, which I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, I upgraded it, and it's supposed to be 100 uh, megabits download and... 10 upload and I'm getting like 11 or 12 upload and then like 40 downloads so it's kind of strange um why am I not topless because that would get me banned and you'd never see me again don't you like seeing me so this is the blackout model of the yeti microphone I thought it was blue yeti is it just yeti yeah it's blue yeti bluemic.com so this is the bottom of the box wait this one there we go Chat's been lagging. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. My latency was 100 milliseconds, and, and yesterday was 30. I'm like, oh, that's a good call, Miko. All right, you guys, I'm going to leave the broadcast for a second. I'm still here, but I can't see any comments, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my settings, and I'm going to see. Oh, you know what? I don't think I've updated on this phone. No, I haven't. I didn't have larger comments on this phone. No wonder I can never see anything. I'm a complete noob. All right, coming back in. All right, I'm back in now. Hey, cool Viet, how are you? Oh wait, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Oh wait, oh no, it didn't let me back in. No, Periscope, come on. Why do you have no love for me? 
yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. Can I get in here? Sorry guys, sometimes when I leave on this phone, it just doesn't let me back in. It only does that on the iPhones, but, oh, is it working? Yay! Okay, oh, bald head Rasta, get out. All right, and thanks for the super hearts, anyone that I may have missed in the interim. k and Craig, and Mike, thank you guys. So let's plug this guy in in case we end up needing it. So many wires, so many devices. All right, there we go. Back to the microphone. Let me in. Yeah, monster, thank you. Oh, Sean, I love Periscope. Periscope is the way I make all my monies. People can hear me. I'm not, I don't have the microphone plugged in yet. I mean, I have my old microphone, which sucks pretty bad, as you can tell from the audio quality. Oh, I didn't show the rest of the box. Here, let me, before I open it up. So I showed the front. What's it say? LE microphone USB. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Ultimate USB microphone for professional recording. This was recommended by some of the ASMR websites I looked up. Uh, Simon Dow, hey, good morning. Who is that? Cindy, good morning, good morning. Good morning, DJ Willie, how are you? How is everybody? Um, and this was on some of the ASMR websites, and then Simon wants to know, oh yeah, this is the Blackout Yeti, Blue Yeti microphone. Hey, John, how are you? And then this shows four settings, infinite possibilities. So there's stereo, cardio ID, omnidirectional, and bidirectional. And they tell you what each one is good for. And I'm sure you can find this on their website, bluemic.com, B-L-U-E-M-I-C.com. <laughs> Freak nasty. This mic is very sensitive. Be careful with it. Um, we'll see about that mic. I'll do my best. That's the mic you use, Chris. Is it very sensitive and you have to be very careful with it? Uh, so here's the ultimate professional USB microphone. This is what we're going to be getting out of the box here. I'm very excited. Um, the gain control, four polar pattern selector, the mute button, the master volume. How much? I think it was about $113 on Amazon. Zero latency headphone output with amplifier and volume control. USB mini jack. Standard threaded mic stand mount. Custom base with cable management. USB cable included. And did I show you all the sides? Oh, I didn't show you this, the back. It says Yeti, legendary ape-like creature who roams the Himalayas. An incredibly versatile USB microphone found world worldwide. Oh good, Simon, I'm glad. I'm excited to play with it. So it's got all the little Yetis all around. So that'll help you remember the name. It's Blue Yeti, and you can get it at bluemic.com or amazon.com. All right. Let's get out. Let's get it out. Hey, Nikki. Let's get in here. I'm excited. I've been waiting for this for a week and a half. No, I fell asleep last night, but I'm back. Coming soon, DJ Taylor. Yeah, I don't know about that, John. Hey, that didn't work at all. Hey, Catchy. You have Amazon Prime? I'm, pr I'm sure this is not the appropriate way to open this. <laughs> the guy's like, be very careful. I'm like dumping it out upside down. All right, we got a little, ooh, it smells weird. Give me a knife. Catchy, thanks for retweeting. Yeah, you guys, I do have this posted on Twitter, so it's really easy to just retweet so people can learn more about the different microphones. And my channel would help me out, too. Hey, Mano, or Mano. Good morning, good morning, beautiful friends. Oh, wait, I can't. Uh oh, is this gonna crash? What's happening? I can put it in another room. What? <laughs> Why would I do that? I can still hear your voice perfectly. I don't wouldn't want it to be turned up that loud. Hello, Lord. I am happily married, so I'm gonna ask you not to make comments like that. And apparently I can't ask for follows or shares. So if you wanna share, if you wanna follow, go for it. So here's our USB cord. Very exciting. We have our little user's manual. Yeti. That's the standard one that it comes with is this like chrome looking one. It's not even chrome really. It's not shiny. It's like a dull gray. 
getting started. Let's wing it without reading the instructions. We have them if we need it. Oh, you were testing it. Yeah, yeah. This one's the same way, but it's really low quality. Exciting! Yes, now how do I get it out? I feel like this is not the right way. Oh well, she dumped it. Alright. <laughs> Set the instructions off to the side. Alright. Okay, let me do it this way. Well, actually, either way is fine. Dun, da, da, da. I just don't want to like over pull on it. I think it's just the styrofoam is like sucked onto it though. I think. Am I doing something wrong? No. Oh, a piece of styrofoam was like wedged in. Okay. Unboxing therapy, yes. ASMR styrofoam. Alright, it draws a lot of power. Make sure your computer is charged up or plugged in while using the mic. I always have it plugged in, so that should be good. Now, this is probably not the best spot for this, but let's just try it. So, flip it up like so. Hey, Ed. Oh, really, Erin? Yeah. Yeah, give it a shot. I mean, it's really big. I'm going to need to put it somewhere else, but let's just put it here for now. Good morning. Here we are. So, let's see, I can't really see very good. What about over here? Let me move my little setup here. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, we're getting ready. We're getting ready. So listen to the audio right now. Listen to the quality of the microphone I'm currently using. Just don't want it to fall over. And now you can't even see it, so that's actually fine, because I don't really want it to be seen in my broadcast. So we have our cord. Plug it in, I think, to the bottom of it. Yes, 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 yes. All right, here, I'll show you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was, like, balancing my laptop. <laughs> All right, you just hold your horses for a second. So it has the little... USB cord right here, plug in, and put this here, dun, 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 dun. flip it back up, turn it so you can't see it, maybe, maybe, oh, pushing button. I'm going to have to find a better spot for this, but that's okay. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. As you can see here, it's, like, gigantic. So, I thought it was going to be a little bit smaller. And it's, like, up really tall because it's on this thing. Kind of seems unnecessary, but whatever. Whatever. Let's just try her out. All right, I'm going to plug her into the computer. I have no idea what's going to happen, so let's find out. Yes, this is Dragster. This is the blue mic... Er, Blue Yeti microphone. It's got styrofoam in it. I don't know. I don't know how to get it out. But uh, this is the blackout model. And I am 27, and please don't ask me about my underwear. Good. You put foam over yours. It's so direct. Putting in earplugs. Yeah, get ready, you guys. I have no idea what's about to happen. But I'm going to plug it in, okay? So listen, we have our current audio. Testing one, two, three. Setting up the device. We are setting up Yeti stereo microphone. The red light came on on the mute button. So this red light just turned on. Device is ready, is set up and ready to go. OBS settings, audio, select Yeti. Thank you. <laughs> Good timing, Chris. Audio. 
Yeti stereo microphone. Here we go. Eric said, ouch, but he's lying because I hadn't chosen it yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you guys hearing me? Ooh. Hang on. Let me see how high we can go. La, la, la. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. About here. Ah. Huh? A little lower. Ah. No. Sorry, guys. That's how I test because that's how I laugh sometimes. Ah. Okay. <laughs> I still have to turn it pretty low. I don't know. La, 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 la. That's better. So how does that sound? Does it sound better? Does it sound different? Flashing light means mute is on. Okay, I'm gonna press mute. Okay, so now it's flashing. And now it's solid. So the flashing light means mute is on. Thank you, Chris. Alex, Aaron's is still low. So how are we feeling? What are we thinking? I can't actually hear myself. I guess I could. Hey, Eric, good morning. I didn't send your uh, product out yet, but hopefully today. I do opera. Yeah, that was my opera voice, Eric. Aren't I really good? Going, okay, Tella Mason says, thanks for going braless on purpose. Uh, yeah, I didn't forget to put a bra on. You guys, I don't wear bras. <laughs> then acting offended when people notice. I'm not offended that you guys have eyeballs and you can see whether or not someone's wearing a bra. What I'm offended by is that you have no self-control and you can't help but comment your thoughts into the chat. I mean, if my body makes you uncomfortable, just leave. I'm comfortable. No difference? You guys said no difference? Maybe sounds the same? Really? Does this do anything? Does that sound loud? Hey, Cola, how are you? <gasps> Alex petted in the house! Oh my god, I feel really famous right now, Alex. Wait, it's, it may or may not be balancing my entire laptop. So I have to hold my laptop with one hand when I want to actually pick it up. <laughs> Mute my old mic. I can't, I can't do that. I already switched the microphone I had chosen. Nothing. Yeah, it's not working. Um, build your path. Yes, if you go to femyoga.com, you'll see why I started this business. It's 100% viewer funded. So the amounts you see there are from the last 30 days. I can't unplug my other mic. It's part of my camera. <laughs> Test your mic directional settings. I don't think it's picking up with this microphone, is it? Um, I forget what the different settings mean. Here it is. Mm -hmm. I don't want to read this. Oh, you know what? It's on the box. Hey, Alex. Thanks for coming in. Do you, have you ever used this microphone? I'm sure you have. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, here it is. Stare well, I want it on stereo, which is what it's on. Okay, so there's cardio ID, omnidirectional, and bidirectional. Let's try. This is omnidirectional. But I don't think it's changing anything. A friend of yours has one, they're great. If only I could get it to actually work. It's I plugged it in while I was live. Oh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> this could be why. <laughs> I may or may not have changed my speakers to be this instead of the microphone. All right, microphone. Here we go. This should work. This should work. Here we go. Ready, ready. <laughs> How about now? Is there a change? Hello? Oh, yeah, definitely a change. I think. Ah, yeah. Hang on, let's turn this up. Turning it up. Turning it up. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry, this is how I test my microphone. I know it's really annoying. Ah, ah, okay, ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because when I laugh really hard, sometimes I do that. I laugh like in this weird high pitch cackle, and it totally breaks my microphone. So that's how I check it. That, that It changed now. All right, so this is on omnidirectional. I don't know at all what that means. I'm sure Chris and Alex can tell us what this means. Now I'm using it. I'm low, louder. Okay. I know sometimes the comments are a little delayed, so I'm going to leave it where it's at, or you're saying you want it louder than this. Thank you, USA Dice Man. The red light means it's charging. I think it just means it's plugged in. Monster said he'll do audio for me. What does that mean? I need it a little closer. No, I don't need it closer. I just need to turn it up. Volume low. It's like 50% lower than before. Really? All right, let's just turn it all the way up. This is as loud as it goes. Difference is your words sound more articulate and natural. Volume needs to be a little more. Now is this too too big? I have no patience. 
turn it, you might be on the back side of the mic. Oh, because I have the omnidirectional thing on? Perfect, Layla. Monster says Giz. Jonna can't turn up louder. That's as loud as it goes. <laughs> Micro has two micros. Yes, it does. It's a stereo microphone. Now you pick up background. Too much? Too much background noise? Ow. Oh, you guys are so picky. Here? It is not bad now. Morning. Hello, Bollywood. It sounds amazing now. Some of you guys are saying too much background noise. Ow. And some of you are saying it sounds amazing now. <laughs> Mix signals. I'll test my own audio after this, but if, if I do that while I'm live, you guys are going to hear like a repeat, so I'll do that when I'm not live. Omni is multi-directional. Okay, yes. So here, let's try our... I'm just going to move it where you can see it, so you can see what I'm doing with it. And hopefully my laptop won't fall over. What the heck? Why is it doing that? Whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> oh god. That's great. Yeah, it wasn't muted. It was that I had put the microphone on the left arrow key, which was turning the volume all the way down. So yeah. That was just turned all the way down. So how's that sound? Audio-wise, me talking, that should be where we were at before. The settings are towards me. Oh, you mean the other directions? Wait, why? Oh, the volume on the actual microphone is all the way down. Oh, guys, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't like to read instructions. All right, I'm going to turn it down there. Turn it up here. How's that? No, no, louder? What? How come it's not going any louder? How come it doesn't seem to be any louder? This volume thing doesn't make any difference. This volume isn't doing anything. Yeah, I, I intentionally turned it down because I wanted to turn up. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the volume knob here on the microphone up and down. It doesn't seem to be making any difference. It is louder. That makes. So what if I do this? I'm going to turn all the way down. And I'm going to go shh. I'm gonna block you, bye. <laughs> um, yeah, I can handle this just fine without my husband, but thanks for the insult, insulting comment. That is for the headphone volume. Oh, as a, when it's as a speaker? Who would use this as a speaker? Okay, it doesn't do anything. All right, that's what I figured. So this is how I think I'm gonna want to use it. As stereo. Type of microphone brand and model. It is the Blue Yeti Blackout version. So you can go to bluemic.com or you can go to amazon.com. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to have it facing me, not away from me. Although that guy that got blocked was really trying to help. All right, you can plug in headphones for monitoring. Oh, freaking Miko, what would I do without you? So I'll be able to hear myself? Oh my god, I feel like a very... Oh, someone asked me how long I've been live streaming. Just over a year. Pretty amateur, as you can tell, but we're getting there. We're getting more and more professional every day. We're one of the most successful channels on Periscope financially. Stereo sounds better. Yeah, I bet it does. But I want to hear myself. Sorry if that's kind of loud to you guys. Okay. Can you hear myself? Sound is way better than before. Yeah, that's what I figured, Marco, was that this would be better. I don't hear anything. How do I hear stuff? Oh, turn this up. Hello. Hello. Do I hear myself? Oh, this is so cool. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so... 
If I go over here, does it sound like it's in one ear? Over here? No. It doesn't sound like it's over here. How about over here? Is this in another ear? No, it's not doing that. Let's try omnidirectional. Ooh, is that really loud in your guys' ears? Sorry, when I switch that. I don't feel like it's switching between the ears. It's binaural. It should be, but I don't. I'm not noticing that. Are you guys? Hi, Ricky. But why would I have this thing facing me? Then I can't get close to the mic. Yeah, Sano? Wait, now I only hear myself in my left ear. Is this plugged in all the way? No, now it is, ha ha. It is, it is? I'm noticing, everyone says they notice, okay. Should we try the next one? You guys, I'll warn you. I'm gonna switch the the mode. So go ahead, turn your volume down. I'll give you five seconds to turn your volume down because it's kind of loud when I switch it. And here we go. You said binaural is opposite. Maybe I am supposed to have it facing the other way. Like this. Okay, I'm gonna switch it. annoying and loud and you can turn your volume back up what is this one called this is called cardio ID yeah I don't hear I don't hear that and then lastly is bi-directional so bi-directional might actually be more what I'm looking for Hi, Davey. Nah. Yeah. Stereo sounds better. Now talk. I'm talking. Talking. I'm lower now. This mic is way better audio. Seriously, Moon Mogul, it's so better. Sound really low now? Huh. I don't know why that is. Oh, because maybe the gain? Let me leave the gain down for now. Sean, I, I'm, we're doing just fine. I don't know why everyone's trying to help. I'm not having any trouble. Thank you. There's about four buttons on this thing, so. Oh, I should have warned you on that. Whoa, I sound so loud. Am I loud right now? Whoa. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm low now that I turned the mic. Oh, well, okay, I'm gonna stop listening to everyone's advice <laughs> because this is how I had it and at least two or three different people told me to turn it around. Much better. No, it's good. It's back to better. What kind of mic is that? Well, I don't have the stereo on still, so this is uh, bi-directional. The gain is more powerful sound, but I didn't turn, touch the gain at all. The gain is all the way down. All the way down. You have blue mics? That's what this is. Whoa, you can hear that. My wire hitting the other cord. That's so loud. It's so sensitive. Is that going from ear to ear? I can't really tell. I don't I don't feel like I hear stereo on mine. Sean, relax. You're okay. You're going to get through this and so am I. And and no one's going to get blocked unless you want to block me. I can't stop you. Can you sing All American Girl? Um, I don't think you want me to sing Fireflies, I'm sorry. The blue is meant to face the camera for free advertising. Well, I don't intend to have it showing. This is just for the test. <laughs> Dingle. <laughs> it's a blue Yeti microphone, the blackout model. Hey, Laura. All right, I'm going to switch it back to uh, stereo and see how this works. So if you want to turn your your uh, audio down. Okay, seriously, Frank, if one more person tells me to turn the microphone around, I'm going to end this broadcast. <laughs> I'm not going to keep turning it around. Some of you guys say to turn it this way. Some of you guys say to turn it the other way. 
it's, I mean, it's a microphone. It should work either way, considering that it's pretty much the same distance from my mouth. Um, bye, Sean. See you never. I hope that's the way I'm meant to be facing. What? How long have I been a streamer? You already asked me that. I already answered it, but I'll answer one more time. Over a year. <laughs> Layla. <laughs> Rebels. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to go back to stereo now. So if you want to turn your volume down, you can. Yeah, switching to and from stereo makes like a weird beep sound. Okay. This is probably gonna be loud. The clarity is chilling. <laughs> Sounds like just don't turn it, just leave it. What does it matter if you turn it around or not? LOL, it is surround. Aaron, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wendy, this is not live. This is a recording. Hi, Durianto. It's very clear. Okay, good. Now, let's see if it goes from one ear to the other. Yeah, this is right. This is right, you guys, because when I go over here, it's in your right ear, right? This is my right. I'm leaning to my right, and you're hearing me in your right ear. And when I come over here, you're hearing me in your left ear, which means it's facing the right way, which means you can all please tell me to or stop telling me to turn it around. <laughs> it is life or death. All right, all right, I think we're okay. Thank you, Davey, for the encouragement on Twitch. Now let's move this so you guys can't see it. Well, actually, when I do ASMR, I'm gonna have to have it like this because to do ear to ear. So then basically I just don't want it to be on stereo when I'm using it normally because then you'll just hear me mainly in one ear. You want one, Matthew? Alexis agrees, thank you. Lucas says, perfect. Stereo sounds much nicer. Is it too loud? Well, I guess we'll just have to see as we hang out and talk and I laugh and stuff. The cardio ID setting, then one side works better than the other. Oh, Mika, okay, the cardio ID, everyone said was really quiet, so I'd probably have to turn the gain up on that. <laughs> Thank you, Zen. Hello, Ben, how are you? Perfect sound. Thank you, Coley. How are you? Not loud. All right, cool. So we got it? We got it good? Should we try reading some books or something? <laughs> Wendy. Wendy said, maybe if you turn around and face the wall, it'll work better. <laughs> Alright, I'm officially cold. It's a, this has been me all day. Cold, not cold. Yes, Laura, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and just not use the microphone and assume that I sound fine, because it's weird hearing yourself in your own ears. Cardioid? Oh, cardioid? Cardioid? <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, Papa Cheddar, this was about $113, I believe? All this technical talk, I just want fries. Now let's watch the numbers decrease. <laughs> are those zombie killers? Yes, these are cash cannons, which I have 4x loaded. So I have it loaded four times as full as they normally are. And now we're just waiting for an excuse to shoot them off, which would be 20,000 super hearts. And we're only at 1,000, so we're waiting. I want to do so much ASMR right now. I have zombies in my I'm hot. Oh. Cardioid, heart-shaped pattern. How is that going to be better on one side or the other? Let's read it. The Yeti is one of the most advanced and versatile multi-pattern Mike Donut patterns. Wait, what is that? ASMR, Aaron? Oh, it's Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, which is the chills and tingles that people get from certain sounds, like... The sound of papers, tapping. If you look it up on YouTube, there's a lot of ASMR artists on there. Obviously, none are as good as I am, but I'm just kidding. 4X loaded, right, Moon? I'm so excited. More focus pickup. What, what? What, JJ? Is that English? Am I going to start ASMR? I already do ASMR. Yeah. The tip of the heart is the greatest pickup. Point towards you. Oh, interesting. Okay. Combining three capsules 
and four different pattern settings, the Yeti is the ultimate tool for creating amazing recordings directly to your computer. Delivering exceptional sound and performance, the Yeti can capture anything with a clarity and ease unheard of in a USB microphone. The butt crack is away from me. <laughs> Eric, it's perfect. Is it tsk or ski? It's, um, there's, oh, there's sk and there's tsk. So there's two different sounds, tsk and sk. The mic is so clear. Yes, to reject noise in that direction. Ah, Eric, okay. So like if my husband is like right off, you know, if he's like right over there and he's on the phone, I could point the point of the heart towards me and the butt crack towards him and you would hear him less. Get a bowl and pour m and slowly. That would be a good sound. It would be pretty loud, I would think, uh, for ASMR. But I could try it. I mean, I'm probably not going to buy M&Ms for that because they're poisonous. But I should beatbox. Wait, what do you do? You put your hands over it? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> was that it? I don't think that was it. Um, I was going to learn what these things are, though. Okay. So for stereo... Oh, yeah. So that's... Oh, that's what the patterns mean. So that's what the little symbols mean is the, the shape of the sound. So what I don't understand is uh, bidirectional. Oh, bidirectional is good so if you have, like, someone sitting over here and I'm interviewing someone sitting here, you would have one person on each side. So it's, it's like, two separate audio feeds. I'm not sure. I have no idea. I don't know why stereo wouldn't be good enough for that, but... You just died? Oh, because of my beatboxing? <laughs> because it was so good and now you're jealous? Ooh, seeds. Ooh, I do have um, sunflower seeds. <laughs> and I also sometimes tap on this jar with my nails. The mic sounds awesome. Yay! I'm so excited. It picks up sound from back and from rice in a bowl. I might have rice. Stick to ASMR. This is ASMR. Oh, you mean for beatboxing? <laughs> Come on, I have a dream to be the number one world beatboxer. It does have cardioid directional. Jay Gatsby, I just learned what that is. I thought it was cardio ID. <laughs> hey, Dr. Sanders, how's it going? How's your new house? Uh, let's see. What else was I going to do? Oh, yeah, we have to pick out a recipe. So for Friday, for you guys, for being here live, even when I'm wearing a sweater, do we want to make... Oh, crap. That's a picture of it, but no recipe. Okay, we can't do that one. Hey, Matt, how are you? Please don't kiss me. Doing good and great. Good, good, good. What's this? Apple and pecan crumbles. Well, that's like a dessert. We're not going to do that. Oh, okay. So they have wild rice stuffing with whole wheat dressing. Wait, no, that doesn't sound good. Sour cream and chive mashed potatoes. Mm, lemon cranberry sauce? No, I don't want any of that. Hi. Beatbox plus ASMR. Ooh. Yes, I know it's Matt. I said hi, Matt. But I also said please don't kiss me, which I, I did mean. Smoky pulled pork. Hmm. No, it seems like too much. I don't want that. Can't believe you said cardio ID. Like you need ID while you're doing cardio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That's probably the same make I, I, I own. Yeah, this is the Blue Yeti Blackout mic. Alexis, I'll kiss you if I darn well want to. All right. Moroccan chicken and vegetable stew. Now this seems awesome. Let's make this. I vote for this. Is the chat bust? Wait, what's wrong, Davy? What do you mean is the chat bust? Oh, you which is because not a lot of people are commenting. Oh, because I'm reading comments from Periscope. So I'm live on Twitch and Periscope right now. Laura said, best thing I ever learned, great potatoes with spices and throw them on a waffle maker. So crispy and easy. We do have a waffle maker, actually. You do. Yeah, this is what you have, Gatsby. Nice. Good night, Matt. Have a good sleep. Sweet dreams. If you need help falling asleep, check out my replays. Who do I see here that I didn't say hi to yet? Oh no, that's just Laura. I just have to get used to your picture. Hey, Steph! 
I typically use the cardioid mode, which is the mode you should be using. When you put it on cardioid, you will sound better as it eliminates. But everyone said I sounded so quiet. If you're interviewing someone, the bidirectional mode would be best. Here's an image that describes. Oh, yeah, I have it. It's right here. Read the legal booklet from the mic. No, I don't want to. It's delayed a little. You can add stuff to the potatoes, too. Yeah, like chives and sour cream. That's what it says here. All right, let's make this, you guys. Moroccan chicken and vegetable stew. Sounds so good. You need to buy a cash gun, or you can just send super hearts and I'll shoot it off for you guys, and it'll probably hit the microphone and everything will break. And then we'll see if we want to make anything else. Okay. We'll leave this to draw from. We'll make this on Friday. Put it over here so I don't forget to go get the ingredients. We do food Fridays, so I make a new dish each Friday. And that is only on Periscope. And then this is trash. Do you think organic potatoes are healthy or not so much? Yeah, they're, they're better than um, non-organic. I would assume, although because they grow on the ground, I don't know how much pesticide they really get on them. Hey, Walter, how are you? Hey, Sana. Um, so as far as organic, oh, purple potatoes is what I was going to say. Purple potatoes are believed to be connected to decreased risk of heart disease. Um, be probably, I don't know if it has something to do with the, what do they call them? Not... Not um, not antioxidants, although it has that too. But what's the other word I'm looking for? I got a hair on my lip. I got a hair lip. Mm, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? The bird is the word. F flavonoids? Is that what I'm talking about? Is that the right word? Why, why can't I get this? There we go. I got it. Mm, yeah. So I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but... That is what we eat. When we eat potatoes, we eat purple potatoes. And they're cool. They're actually bright purple on the inside. Yeah, Gatsby, you're, yeah, anti, they do have antioxidants, but I think it's like flavonoids. It's something that's in the purple color. If you think of it, let me know. I'm open to suggestions. Oh, and I never put this back up. Wait, is that my leg? Oh, I thought that was my laptop. I guess it's okay. It's kind of chopping my head off a little. Thanks for the super hard song! Sana wants to see the new extra loaded cash cannons, and she wants to be the stream boss. I love it. Thanks for the hearts, uh, Steph and Alexis. Oh, let me put my heart race up for you. My loveies, my love doves. And actually, Peter is winning the heart race. Where is the heart race? Here it is. Thunk! Potato hands. What? Mr. Potato Head? Sana is the stream boss! Yes! All hail the queen of Periscope. All hail. Not worthy. <laughs> Not worthy. <laughs> All right, what else? I think, was there something else? We have cash cannons, we have microphone, we unboxed everything. I can't see your intense hair part. It's not intense. Look, there's only like an inch of it. Is it too intense? Wait, I'm pulling from the wrong side. You want me to hide it? I'll try to hide it. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't hide. It doesn't hide. But it does have a... Uh... Oh, yep, now it's worse. Did you get a lot of snow from the last storm? Yeah, we did. We got like, I don't know, a million, a million inches or so, give or take. <laughs> so should we whisper read... Something, or should we just read normally? Weird through microphone, like it's not a tiny smartphone. Oh, well actually, no, you've never, uh, sometimes I do use my smartphone, but I never really use my smartphone microphone. What I use normally when I, so when I broadcast like this, I'm not broadcasting from my phone, I'm broadcasting from my computer, and what I'm using is the microphone built into the Logitech C920, so when, before we had this, that was the Logitech. So I can switch over and show you what that's like give you the side-by-side -side comparison. So we have the Logitech C920 microphone built into the webcam. I'm going to click OK and you're going to see you're going to hear it change. So this is the microphone that's built into the camera. It is also stereo so if I go over here you should hear me more on one side and if I go over here you should hear me more on the other side. Uh, the only issue with that is when I want to come in really close to the microphone and whisper into it really quietly. 
I can't do that because it's so far away from me. I would have to get up and come like right here and my face would be really close to the camera and I'd be really uncomfortable because I'd be leaning over my laptop. It's not sustainable. Here I can sit comfortably and just kind of lean in if I want to or I could sit closer to it and be really close and whisper. So let's switch it back. That's the Logitech C920 and this is the Yeti microphone. Back to the Yeti, this is what it sounds like. Hopefully you can hear the difference. I'm pr pretty sure you probably can. And when I use my smartphone to broadcast from, I use this Rode Lavalier microphone. The mic didn't change? Really, Miko? That's weird. I hit apply. Hmm. I don't know why it didn't change. It should have. So I have it clipped to itself because I don't always clip it to myself. Hey, Steve, Steve is our most recent platinum level sponsor. Steve, I'm sorry, I didn't, I forgot to up, update this list before I went live. So you're not, your, your latest number isn't right, but I'll, I'll fix it for the next one. I was just really excited to try my microphone and I went live and immediately was like, oh, I forgot to change the list. <laughs> but I give you a shout out in the beginning too. Towards the beginning-ish. You can't tell? Oh, maybe it didn't change then. If I still sound really good, it's, it's still on this mic. I don't know why it didn't change. Maybe because I hit apply instead of okay. I don't know. That's okay though. Trust me, it's a lot better. Just watch any of my replays. You'll see it's like a night and day difference. Um, but the, this is a really nice microphone. Rode makes nice microphones. This was about $70, I think. So about a little less than, or a little more than half the price of this one. And this is obviously a little portable, light little pouch. I just throw it in my purse, carry it around with me anytime I want. Then I can plug it in to my phone and I also carry around the scoping products pocket pod so that I can either hold it like this yeah Lucas it's way better right Lucas is one of my viewers for a little while here so I can hold like this and then the microphone I just put the microphone away but the microphone would be plugged in right here I'll show you I'll give you the full the full fem yoga Taylor behind the scenes <laughs> if I can get it out there we go. So if I'm holding it, then I will clip it onto myself. So I'll plug it in, clip like this, come up through the shirt. Obviously you do this before you go live, otherwise this will be really loud for your audience. Clip. So you have the microphone right here. People will probably barely notice it. And then I can hold this like this. Now, and sometimes I actually lately have been holding it like this, like this, because when I want to set it up like a tripod, this actually works better because then I can go like that, open up my little legs, and now it's a tripod. So now I can set it. You guys won't really see it, but if I put it on like this box or something, I don't know. How about this notebook? Anything secret on here? No. So it's a little tripod like that. So this is called the Pocket Pod by Scoping Products. I'm obsessed with it. I use it all the time because it's like a, oops, sorry, I hit the microphone. Um, it's like a little um, camera mount, like a handheld camera grip, like what I have here. But you can do landscape. With this one, you can only do landscape. You have to attach this guy to it to get your smartphone to fit onto it so grab one of the other phones oops am I moving my microphone around whatever oh yeah this is my one that's kind of like broken so you can only do landscape with the normal grip. Yeah, the smart, actually that's funny because this is the pocket pod, but he has one called the all-in-one um, tripod, which I'm actually using right now too. So I have you guys, I'm watching the scope using this tripod. And this is just scopingproducts.com where you can get all these things. Not, not the microphone, but the tripods. So it's a tripod, adjustable height. It has three adjustments in height, 
and don't this part is separate so I bought this separately this is the clip mount so you can see in the back here if I come in here this right here is just clipped around this uh, tripod so I mounted it to this tripod but you can mount this guy anywhere this clip mount this is scoping products too you can clip this to like a railing somewhere anything that is like you like maybe even your steering wheel or something I mean steering wheel probably would I don't know what you'd be filming Maybe if you're just listening to something or looking at your GPS, I don't know. But you can clip it to anything that this will fit around. Um, so I clipped it right to this tripod to make it like a two-in-one tripod. So now I can have one phone here, one phone here, working our way closer and closer to being the female Ty Lopez. Talking to you, Ty. You paying attention? You watching? Ty, are you in the lobby? Come in. Come in, say hi. Oh, I forgot I can't see the comments because I put this here. How much did my mic cost? Waken, this one here was $113 on Amazon. It's called the Blue Yeti microphone and it's the blackout model. It's actually the cheapest one I could find and I like the blackout one the best. As you can tell, I like black everything. Um, so it's adjustable in height like that. It has this tripod here, the, the bottom, so that you can set it up or you can actually take that part off steering wheel I know right Peter I'm like I don't know what I'm talking about um, so you can take that off this is a grip here and then you can use it as a selfie stick like this and it goes long it's like the world's longest selfie stick it's the longest selfie stick of anything on the market last one when, when I got it anyway last year not not even that long ago it's probably still the longest one um, it goes longer than this but it won't fit in the screen it goes much longer so you have two full uh, more adjustments so you can have it quite far away what I find that useful for is when I'm broadcasting with multiple people when I have like people why is not so expensive mine cost me 250 at Guitar Center and it does not look that cool like yours oh we can um, probably because you bought it at a store so you paid retail price for it instead of buying it online I got this on Amazon so it's gonna be the best price you can find um, if you got it recently enough you could return it and go get one like this if you want I like it. It has multiple different um, modes here. There's my gain. My gain's completely all the way down, so I could make it even more powerful than this. Taller than you, right, Alexis? I know, right? I'm like, ah. Uh, but when I, if I have like a friend on each side of me, this is nice because you can get further away and see more of us and see more of the background. So it's not just like our faces trying to fit in half of somebody's faces cut off, you know? Um, and what's really cool about these scoping products is that you can do them all in landscape or portrait where most selfie sticks only allow you to do landscape it sounds good oh good 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 so with this you can see I have it set up for portrait right the phone would go in like this like that or you can loosen this up and flip it landscape And you can even angle it, so if you are using it as a selfie stick, you can angle it like that, you know, kind of angle it down so it's like looking at you when you're using it as a selfie stick. Like that. <laughs> it's good stuff, but I don't want it portrait. Or I don't want it landscape, I mean. I like portrait so then we just screw our little and when it comes out of the box it's just like this it's this and then this piece all you have to do is screw this on if you want to use it as a tripod and that's it shout out to Jeff from scoping products the owner of scoping products he actually gave me the pocket pod and the all-in-one tripod for free when I went and met him in Montreal and he even gave me my own promo code. So if you go to scopingproducts.com and you want to buy something, just use the promo code FEMYOGA and you'll get 40% off. 40%? I thought it was like 20, 25. He messaged me the other day. He's like, just so you know, it's 40%. I was like, 40%? What? So yeah, get 40% off. Why not? How much is the stand? Oh, the tripod? Oh, because I didn't buy it, I don't really know, but I would get, I mean, he's got the best prices that I know of as far as like a retail, you know, I don't think he can compete with directly from China, but you get what you pay for. What? What? I forgot the microphone was clipped to me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but if you get something directly from China, it'll probably just break on you in two seconds like this thing did for me. This thing keeps peeling off. You need to get to know Jeff. There you go. There you go. Um, so that's what that's what I was saying. If I um, try to sneak this up here, so if I'm broadcasting with holding it, oh yeah, no. So now I have it set up like a tripod. If I broadcast with it from holding it, then I would have it clipped to my shirt, like I showed you a minute ago. Now on this one, when I have it set up like a tripod, when I I use um, stuff like this when I do my yoga scope sometimes, I just clip the mic right to itself like that and then that way the microphone's right there which is a lot better microphone than what comes built into my iphone 6 plus but zach cookman who came on the show sunday night he had an iphone 6 plus and the microphone was like amazing he didn't even have anything plugged into it socio lawyer where do you buy so the scoping products for the 40 percent off discount the tripods those are scopingproducts.com i'll put it up on the screen here And let me get it. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. Hopefully you can see that, okay? Scopingproducts.com. And the promo code is FEMYOGA. I guess I'll just write this all out so you can just screenshot it. 40% off. Actually, let me put promo code first. Promo, hey. You're welcome. Like that? You see that? Yeah, that's pretty good. Scopingproducts.com, promo code FEMYOGA gets you 40% off. Maybe I can make it just a little bigger, a little bit, whoop, like that. Yeah. And that's for the tripods. So as far as the microphones, the Rode microphone and the, um, Blue Yeti microphone. I got those both on Amazon. If you direct message me on Instagram or Twitter, I can send you links to all the products if you'd like. I should figure out, I should get something on my website where I can post up everything, all my gear and everything after my broadcasts. We'll get there. We'll get there. And then the YouTube descriptions, right, Ed? Or you, I don't know if you're paying attention, but I should link to everything so you guys can buy it really easy. You don't have to go look stuff up yourself. I'm learning. I'm getting better all the time, right? All right, we're in our last 30 minutes of the broadcast here. Thank you for sharing this out, Ketchy and Wendy, and anyone else who may or may not be in my notifications because I probably may or may not follow you on Twitter. Gear page, yes, yes, Eric, I think you gave me that idea a while ago, and it's been on my to-do list ever since. Hey, look, silica beads. Anybody want to eat these? I know, yeah, and I, was, I was gonna link the affiliate links. You'll check it out? Yay, thank you, Lucas. Yeah, if you guys get scoping products gear, that helps other another broadcaster, another channel too. And maybe he'll give you your own code and you'll have a ifu barcode. Or Lucas Roberts. <laughs> Lucas Roberts says, yum, silica beads. Or a Nike code, or a South Jersey broker code, or a Reed Dexter code. <laughs> yum, Walter said yum too. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's test this out on reading a book. What do we want? The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins, or Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand? I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds to vote. I'll show you, I'll show you your options. The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins, or Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. The countdown begins now, and if you don't pick, I'm just going to randomly pick one. SJ Broker Code gets you 5% off and 35% 35% commission. Josecito, this is the blue mic 
or I'm sorry, the Blue Yeti microphone, which you can get at bluemic.com or on Amazon. I got mine on Amazon, and it's the blackout model. Selfish? Walter says selfish. All right, he's the only one who voted, so he wins. Good job, Walter. Now I don't have to think. They're both good books, so either way, we win. Chapter three, Immortal Coils. Someone said Immortal Coils in my scope the other day. Wait, I want to keep playing with the microphone really quick. So let's test this now, because that's what I wanted to test. I wanted to test the whispering side to side, ear to ear. We know that works. Now I want to test how it is for reading a book, and I don't want this in front of me. I'm going to move it over to the side. So what I'm going to need to do is figure out, actually, I guess if I just turn it like this. That might be okay. If I make sure it's pretty centered on me, then you should still pretty much hear me in both um, in both ears, pretty even. So I'm just wondering, do I sound like I'm all on your right side now, or how does that sound? Does it sound pretty balanced, or is it weird, like louder in one ear than the other? Oh, I have my I have headphones. <laughs> I forgot I can hear myself now. nice okay turn this up hello 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 Ooh, you guys hear that background noise what is that has that been like that the whole time let's try a different mode So this way, oh yeah, it's a lot quieter. So I just have to turn up the gain maybe. What is that, the top button? Okay, so I'll be over here. Turn this up louder, 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 louder. Ah! It doesn't seem to be getting, oh yeah, it's getting louder. But then the background noise is louder too. That sounds worse. I don't like that. Let's turn that back down. So, I still, I still hear a lot of background noise. What do I do? Is it okay? Is it too quiet? I feel like it's too quiet now. If I'm just gonna read a book. Is it too quiet? I need feedback. I need someone to say something to me. Walter said it sounds fine. What was that? What mode is it in now? This is the cardioid. You don't hear any noise? Like that background. Oh, maybe my microphone isn't plugged in all the way. No, no, I didn't unplug it. It should be okay. Lucas says it sounds okay. Keep it down and it sounds fine. Might be the distance. I don't hear any noise at first. I'm confused and the shirt is not fluttering. Why is it like that? It's like Miss Sewed. That's probably why it was on sale. No background noise here now. I think it's better, yeah. And is it loud enough? Can you guys hear me okay? Once I get a yes from one person, I'm gonna start reading the book. <laughs> Which again is The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. Who looks at shirts anyway? Apparently all the trolls. Yep, okay, cool, let's try it. Sounds good, all right. All right, cool, because last time you guys were saying it was really quiet. Eric. <laughs> Immortal coils. We are survival machines, but we does not mean just people. It embraces all animals, plants, bacteria, and viruses. The total number of survival machines on Earth is very difficult to count, and even the total number of species is unknown. It's fine? All right, cool. Thank you, Zen, Walter, Jose. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lucas. Cool. Taking just insects alone, the number of living species has been estimated at around 3 million. And the number of individual insects may be a million, million, million. Different sorts of survival machines appear very, very varied on the outside and in their internal organs. An octopus is nothing like a mouse, and both are quite different from an oak tree. 
yet in their fundamental chemistry they are rather uniform. And in particular, the replicators that they bear, the genes, are basically the same kind of molecule in all of us, from bacteria to elephants. We are all survival machines for the same kind of replicator, molecules called DNA, but there are many different ways of making a living in the world, and the replicators have built a vast range of machines to exploit them. A monkey is a machine that preserves genes up trees. A fish is a machine that preserves genes in the water. There's even a small worm that preserves genes in German beer mats. <laughs> DNA works in mysterious ways. For simplicity, I've given the impression that modern genes made of DNA are much the same as the first replicators in the primeval soup. It does not matter for the argument, but this may not really be true. Is yoga today? Yeah, I'm doing yoga with grandma today in about five hours. And if she doesn't let me broadcast it, then I'll be doing it from home when I get home after that. It is live, Mike Johnson. If you have any questions about the microphone I'm using, any questions about the book, or any questions about anything you see here, let me know. It does not matter Oh, I read that. The original replicators may have been related, ha, may have been a related kind of molecule to DNA, or they may have been totally different. In the latter case, we may say that their survival machines must have been seized at, at a later stage by DNA. If so, the original replicators were utterly destroyed, for no trace of them remains in modern survival machines. What is this? Uh, what? What is what? The channel. This is Fem Yoga. I'm Taylor. I do three hours of live content every day. Today we'll be getting closer to four and a half hours because I fell asleep early last night, which is why I'm on early today. Um, you can learn more about the business at femyoga.com and you can get involved, involved, not evolved. I mean, you can get involved maybe too, but you can get involved by supporting the channel, which is 100% viewer funded by all these amazing, 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 amazing people. Eric, I see you in the room. Um, yeah. So once you've watched for a while and you've gotten some value, you've learned some stuff, you can support the channel. German beer worms sound good. It actually does sound good, Walter. I love beer, especially German beer. <laughs> no, I actually prefer Belgian beer the most. I love Belgian beer. Along these lines, A.G. Karen Smith has made the intriguing suggestion that our ancestors, the first replicators, may not have been, or sorry, may have been not organic molecules at all, but inorganic crystals, minerals, little bits of clay. Usurper or not, DNA is an in undisputed charge, excuse me, today, unless, as I tentatively suggest in chapter 11, a new seizure of power is now just beginning. A DNA molecule is a long chain of building blocks, small molecules called nucleotides. Just as protein molecules are chains of amino acids, so DNA molecules are chains of nucleotides. A DNA molecule is too small to be seen, but its exact shape has been ingeniously worked out by indirect means. It consists of a pair of nucleotide chains twisted together in an elegant spiral, the double helix, the immortal coil. The nucleotide building blocks come in only four different kinds, whose names may be shortened to A, T, C, and G. These are the same in all animals and plants. What differs is the order in which they're strung together. A G building block from a man is identical in every particular to a G building block from a snail, but the sequence of building blocks in a man is not only different from that of a snail, it is also different, though less so, from the sequence in every other man, except in the case of identical twins. Our DNA lives inside our bodies. It is not concentrated in a particular part of the body, but is distributed among the cells. There are about a thousand million million cells making up an average human body, and with some exceptions which we can ignore, every one of those cells contains a complete copy of that body's DNA. This DNA can be regarded as a set of instructions for how to make a body written in the ATCG alphabet of the nucleotides. It is as though in every room of a gigantic building there was a bookcase containing the architect's plans for the entire building. The bookcase in a cell is called the nucleus. The architect's plans run to, f run to 46 volumes in man. The number is different in other species. The volumes are called chromosomes. 46. Is that right? <laughs> they are visible under a microscope as long threads, and the genes are strung out along them in order. It's not easy, indeed it may not even be meaningful, to decide where one gene ends and the next one begins. 
Fortunately, as this chapter will show, this does not matter for our purposes. I shall make use of the metaphor of the architect's plans, freely mixing the language of the metaphor with the language of the real thing. Volume will be used interchangeably with chromosome. Page will provisionally be used interchangeably with gene. Although the division between genes is less clear cut than the division between the pages of a book, this metaphor will take us quite a long way. 46? Oh, okay, thanks, Lucas. <laughs> when it finally breaks down, I shall introduce other metaphors. Incidentally, there is, of course, no architect. The DNA instructions have been assembled by natural selections. Hey, Alex. If you have any questions about the microphone, tell me. I'm just kind of testing out reading with the cardioid setting mode. <laughs> DNA molecules do two important things. Firstly, they replicate. That is to say, they make copies of themselves. Millennial, no, I don't read the Bible in my scope. No, I've read the Bible uh, at least once or twice myself before when I was a Christian, uh, but now I'm an agnostic and I have no interest in sharing that kind of content on my channel, but I encourage you guys, if you'd like to read the Bible, go for it. This has gone on nonstop ever since the beginning of life, and the DNA molecules are now very good at it indeed. As an adult, you consist of a thousand million million cells, but when you were first conceived, you were just a single cell, endowed with one master copy of the architect's plans. This cell divided into two, and each of the two cells received its own copy of the plans. Successive divisions took the number of cells up to 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on into the billions. At every division, the DNA plans were faithfully copied with scarcely any mistakes. It's one thing to speak of the duplication of DNA, but if the DNA is really a set of plans for building a body, how are the plans put into practice? How are they translated into the fabric of the body? This brings me to the second important thing DNA does. Hey, Clean Show! It indirectly supervises the manufacture of a different kind of molecule, protein. The hemoglobin, which was mentioned in the last chapter, is just one example of the enormous range of protein molecules. The coded message of the DNA, written in the four-letter nucleotide alphabet, is translated in a simple, mechanical way into another alphabet. This is the alphabet of amino acids, which spells out protein molecules. Um, thank you so much, Coin Show, for the super hearts. Taking Sodom down a notch, filling up and overflowing our tip jar. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you. We have big uh, super heart goals. We're trying to get to 30 million super hearts by March 18th, which is only 12 days away. We have a big, big push. So every single one that you send helps us out a lot. I appreciate that. Thank you, Coin Show. And someone asked what book we're reading. This is called The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. Thank you, Clancha. I like the sparkly pink ones, too. And shout out to Peter, Alexis, Coley, Steph, Wendy. Look at all the ladies representing. I love this. Eunice and Wu. Thanks for the hearts, you guys. Loving it. I'm feeling the love. <laughs> making proteins may seem a far cry from making a body, but it's the first small step in that direction. Proteins not only constitute much of the physical fabric of the body, but they also exert sensitive control over all the chemical processes inside the cell, selectively turning them on and off at precise times and in precise places. Exactly how this eventually leads to the development of a baby is a story which will take decades, perhaps centuries, for embryologists to work out, but it is a fact that it does. Oh my gosh, coin show, you're about to do the stream, boss. Genes do indirectly control the manufacture of bodies, and the influence is strictly one way. Acquired characteristics are not inherited. Yes, coin show, the stream boss, all hail, the stream boss. Privyet, peti, I don't know what you're saying there in Russian, but um, privyet, that's all I know how to say. No matter how much knowledge and wisdom you acquire during your life, not one jot will be passed on to your children by genetic means. Each new generation starts from scratch. A body is the genes' way of preserving the genes unaltered. Thank you, Coin Show. The evolutionary importance of the fact that genes control embryonic development is this. It means that genes are at least partly responsible for their own survival in the future, because their survival depends on the efficiency of the bodies in which they live and which they helped to build. Once upon a time, natural selection consisted of the differential survival of replicators floating free in the primeval soup. Now, natural selection favors replicators that are good at building survival machines, genes that are skilled in the art of controlling embryonic development. 
In this, the replicators are no more conscious or purposeful than they ever were. The same old processes of automatic selection between rival molecules by reason of their longevity, fecundity, and copying fidelity still go on as blindly and as inevitably as they did in the far-off days. And we read about all of that in the first chapter or two. Thank you, Coinshow. Genes have no foresight. They do not plan ahead. Genes just are. Some genes more so than others, and that's all there is to it. But the qualities that determine a gene's longevity and fecundity are not so simple as they were, not by a long way. In recent years, the last 600 million or so, the replicators have achieved notable triumphs of survival machine technology such as the muscle, the heart, and the eye, evolved several times independently. Oops, I hit reply. Wait, I don't want to hit reply. I'm not trying to comment to you. Oh, okay, I just commented to you. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay. Boom. Before that, they radically altered fundamental features of their way of life as replicators, which must be understood if we are to proceed with the argument. Hello, Chad! How are you? Welcome, you guys. That's our DJ on Saturday nights. Chad, XX Elusive XX. Uh, the past three Saturday nights at 10 p.m., we have had house music, dance party, and had such a good time. And I, I just forgot something until just now, but I'm not going to say it out loud, but I will take care of it after this broadcast. All right. The first thing to grasp about a modern replicator is that it is highly gregarious. A survival machine is a vehicle containing not just one gene, but many thousands. The manufacture of a body is a cooperative venture of such intricacy that it's almost impossible to disentangle the contribution of one gene from that of another. A given gene will have many different effects on quite different parts of the body. A given part of the body will be influenced by many genes, and the effect of any one gene depends on interaction with many others. It goes down! It goes down in the DM. Thank you, Coinshow! Some genes act as master genes, controlling the operation of a cluster of other genes. In terms of the analogy, any given page of the plans makes reference to many different parts of the building, and each page makes sense only in terms of cross-references to numerous other pages. This intricate interdependence of genes may make you wonder why we use the word gene at all. Why not use a collective noun like gene complex? The answer is that for many purposes that is indeed quite a good idea. But if we look at things in another way, it does make sense, too, to think of the gene, gene complex as being divided up into discrete replicators or genes. This arises because of the phenomenon of sex. Hey, Donna. Crazy show last night? The yoga? With uh, the babies? Sexual reproduction has the effect of mixing and shuffling genes. This means that any one individual body is just a temporary vehicle for a short-lived combination of genes. The combination of genes that is any one individual may be short-lived, but the genes themselves are potentially very long-lived. Their paths constantly cross and recross down the generations. One gene may be regarded as a unit that survives through a large number of successive individual bodies. This is the central argument that will be, will be developed in this chapter. It is an argument that some of my most respected colleagues obstinately refuse to agree with, so you must forgive me if I seem to labor it. First, I must briefly explain the facts of sex. I said that the plans for building a human body are spelt out in 46 volumes. In fact, this was an oversimplification. The truth is rather bizarre. The 46 chromosomes consist of 23 pairs of chromosomes. America! <laughs> we might say that filed away in the nucleus of every cell are two alternative sets of 23 volumes of plans. Call them Volume 1A, Volume 1B, Volume 2A, and Volume 2B, etc., down to Volume 23A and 23B. Of course, the identifying numbers I use for volumes and later pages are purely arbitrary. We receive each chromosome intact from one of our two parents, in whose testes or ovary it was assembled. Volumes 1A, 2A, 3A come, say, from the father. Volumes 1B, 2B, 3B came from the mother. 
It is very difficult in practice, but in theory you could look with a microscope at the 46 chromosomes in any one of your cells and pick out the 23 that came from your father and the 23 that came from your mother. The paired chromosomes do not spend all their lives physically in contact with each other or even near each other. In what sense then are they paired? In the sense that each volume coming originally from the father can be regarded page for page as a direct alternative to one particular volume coming originally from the mother. For instance, page 6 of volume 13a and page 6 of volume 13b might both be about eye color. Perhaps one says blue while the other says brown. Hey Lou, you got a new profile picture, you're gone. Sometimes the two alternative pages are identical, but in other cases, as in our example of eye color, they differ. If they make contradictory recommendations, what does the body do? The answer varies. Sometimes one reading prevails over the other. In the eye color example just given, the person would actually have brown eyes. The instructions for making blue eyes would be ignored. In the building of the body, though this does not stop them from being passed on to future generations, a gene that is ignored in this way is called recessive. The opposite of a recessive gene is a dominant gene. The gene for brown eyes is dominant to the gene for blue eyes. A person has blue eyes only if both copies of the relevant page are unanimous in recommending blue eyes. More usually, when two alternative genes are not identical, the result is some kind of compromise. The body is built to an intermediate design or something completely different. When two genes, like the brown eye and the blue eye gene, are rivals for the same slot on a chromosome, they are called alleles of each other. For our purposes, the word allele is synonymous with rival. Thank you, Matt. Imagine the volumes of architects' plans as being loose leaf binders whose pages can be detached and interchanged. Every volume 13 must have a page 6, but there are several possible page 6s which could go in the binder between page 5 and page 7. You have blue eyes, see? Both of your parents gave you blue eye genes, and that means that you, the only way, the only gene that you can give, Chad, to your kids is blue eye genes. It doesn't mean they're going to have blue eyes, because if your baby mama gives a brown eye gene, then they're going to have brown eyes. But even if your baby mama has brown eyes, she could have the recessive gene for blue eyes, and your kid could still have blue eyes. <laughs> Are you drinking coffee or tea, Lucas? <laughs> One version says blue eyes. Another possible version says brown eyes. There may be yet other versions in the population at large which spell out other colors like green. Perhaps there are half a dozen alternative alleles sitting in the page 6 position on the 13th chromosomes, scattered around the population as a whole. Any given person only has two volume 13 chromosomes. Therefore, he can have a maximum of two alleles in the page six slot. They better be blue. <laughs> he may, like a blue-eyed person, have two copies of the same allele, or he may have any two alleles chosen from the half dozen alternatives available in the population at large. T, nice. Blue eyes and blonde hair only, Chewbacca? I can't help with providing that. Oh, look how dark it got because I unplugged my thing. Well, I guess I could just turn it off. All right. You cannot, of course, literally go and choose your genes from a pool of genes available to the whole population. Actually, this was written in the 70s, and that's becoming more possible, actually. At any given time, all the genes are tied up inside individual survival machines. Our genes are doled out to us at conception, and there's nothing we can do about this. Nevertheless, there is a sense in which... Oh yeah, Walter, yeah, my eyes look green sometimes too, especially if I cry or if I have like the ring light really bright in my eyes, it'll be, they'll look really green. Nevertheless, there is a sense in which in the long term, the genes of the population in general can be regarded as a gene pool. This phrase is in fact a technical term used by geneticists. The gene pool is a worthwhile abstraction because sex mixes genes up, albeit in a careful organized way, in particular, something like the detaching and interchanging of pages and wads of pages from loose leaf binders really does go on, as we shall presently see. I've described the normal division of a cell into two new cells, each one receiving a complete copy of all 46 chromosomes. This normal cell division is called mitosis, but there's another kind of cell division called meiosis. 
Um, Chewbacca says, do you know the gene editing program called CRISPR? No, I haven't heard about that, but is that what I'm talking about? Like, where you can pick whether you want your kid to be a boy or a girl or have blue eyes or stuff like that? A sperm, wait, 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 wait. This occurs only in the production of the sex cells, the sperms or eggs. A desk-sized American flag. I don't have really a desk. I mean, I guess I do. I could put it on the wall or something or wrap it around myself. Sure, you can send me stuff. I love prize, um, presents. So, prizes. Give, send me a prize. What did I win? Femyoga.com. If you click contact, you'll see the mailing address for the business. Sperms and eggs are unique among our cells in that containing instead of 46 chromosomes, they contain only 23. This is, of course, exactly half of 46, convenient when they fuse in sexual fertilization to make a new individual. Meiosis is a special kind of cell division taking place only in testicles and ovaries, in which a cell with the full double set of chromosomes divides to form sex cells with a single set of 23, all the time using the human numbers for illustration. Are you serious, Chewbacca? He said he learned this exact section in biology last week. I think you were meant to be here, my friend. We're reading The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. A sperm with its 23 chromosomes is made by the meiotic division of one of the ordinary 46 chromosome cells in the testicle. Hi, Hanati, how are you? You know all my words? Okay, you can, you wanna take over? I'll go take a little break. <laughs> Which 23 are put into any given sperm cell? It's clearly important that a sperm should not just get any old 23 chromosomes. It mustn't end up with two copies of volume 13 and none of volume 17. It would theori theoretically be possible for an individual to endow one of his sperms with chromosomes, which came, say, entirely from his mother. That's volume 1B, 2B, 3B, 23B. In this unlikely event, a child conceived by the sperm would inherit half her genes from her paternal grandmother and none from her paternal grandfather. But in fact, this kind of gross whole chromosome distribution doesn't happen. The truth is rather more complex. Remember that the volumes, chromosomes, are to be thought of as loose leaf binders. What happens is that during the manufacture of the sperm, single pages, or rather multi-page chunks, are detached and swapped with the corresponding chunks from the alternative volume. So one particular sperm might make up its volume 1 by taking the first 65 pages from volume 1A and pages 66 to the end from volume 1B. This sperm cell's other 22 volumes would be made up in a similar way. Thank you, Chad, for all the hearts. Therefore, every sperm cell made by an individual is unique. Even though all his sperms assembled their 23 chromosomes from bits of the same set of 46 chromosomes, eggs are made in a similar way in ovaries, and they too are all unique. Welcome back, Sonam! You got out, stream boss, but you're still the super heart leader. The real life mechanics of this mixing are fairly well understood. During the manufacture of a sperm or egg, bits of each paternal chromosome physically detach themselves and change places with exactly corresponding bits of maternal chromosome. The process of swapping bits of chromosome is called crossing over. <laughs> it's very important for the whole argument of this book. It means that if you got out your microscope and looked at the chromosomes in one of your own sperms, or eggs if you're female, it would be a waste of time trying to identify chromosomes that originally came from your father and chromosomes that originally came from your mother. Any one chromosome in a sperm would be a patchwork, a mosaic of maternal genes and paternal genes. <laughs> Chewbacca, yeah, I'm a pretty unusual yoga teacher. The metaphor of the page for the gene starts to break down here. In a loose leaf binder, a whole page may be inserted, removed, or exchanged, but not a fraction of a page. But the gene complex is just a long string of nucleotide letters, not divided into discrete pages in, in an obvious way at all. To be sure, there are special symbols for end of protein chain message and start of protein chain message written in the same four letter, letter alphabet as the protein messages themselves. In between these two punctuation marks are the coded instructions for making one protein. If we wish, we can define a single gene as a sequence of nucleotide letters lying between a start and an end symbol and coding for one protein chain. <laughs> our Luaku. What does that even mean? How, how could that even be? How could that be the case? What are you implying? 
I'm happy to explain and answer any of your questions. The word cistron has been used for a unit defined in this way, and some people use the word gene interchangeably with cistron, but crossing over does not respect boundaries between cistrons. Splits may occur within cistrons as well as between them. It's as though the architect's plans were written out not on discrete pages, but on 46 rolls of ticker tape. Cistrons are not of fixed length. Oh, the connection dropped? Oh, we're back on um, Twitch. Isn't yoga a fad? I mean, it's been around probably longer than anything else that we can think of. So I don't think it's a fad. I mean, it's one of the most ancient physical practices in the world. <laughs> um, is this chapter ever going to end? Wait, it did end. Where's the end of it? Oh, because the chapters are on this side. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we still have quite a lot to read. I might skip some of this because this is getting really specific into the way that genes function and... I don't understand why we need to know all the specifics of this. Really what we want to know is, are humans intended to be selfish or altruistic? We're kind of focusing on individualism versus, well not even, we're, we're focusing on selfishness versus self-sacrifice. And what is the natural way that we are, are live, and should we be fighting our nature or going with it? Is it going to help our, our individual selves? Is it going to help our species? Is it going to help life on the planet as a whole? Etc. It's been the longest fad ever, right, Chad? <laughs> Your connection's good on Periscope? Okay, good. Hello, dick weebles. <laughs> Duke My Nuke says, I think there are a lot of things older and more culturally significant than yoga. Culturally significant to whom? Uh, because I'm sure that there's not a whole lot more culturally significant to Indians and Hindus in general. I mean, Sanskrit is one of the first recorded languages, or it's one of the most ancient languages in the world. It's one of the most ancient human languages, and it's the language of yoga. I mean, we still use it in yoga, and it's, I mean, they've been worshipping the sun and doing sun salutations, and worshipping the sun god, I mean, since early days of humanity. So, I mean, it's gonna, you're gonna be hard pressed to prove something more uh, older and culturally significant than yoga. Lou says the Upanishads are older than yoga. Are they? I, do I have the Upanishads? Let's look it up. We're gonna pause our book here. To Humanity. Moby Dick. If you want me to read a book, you can send me the book you want me to read at femyoga.com, click contact. All right, Upanishads versus yoga. Let's see what we get. There are 20 yoga Upanishads in the anthology of 108 Upanishads listed in the Muktika anthology. So yoga is included in the Upanishads, which would imply that yoga existed first before the Upanishads were written. But thanks for um, wasting our time. Unless I'm missing something here. I'm open to being wrong. 108, yes, awesome! Like when people do 108 sun salutations on the equinoxes. Sonam's name is Sonam 108. It's significant because she actually is Indian, so it probably all goes back to the ancient man in India practicing yoga. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think that this is important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chromosome. What about the length of the chromosome? Again, we don't really care. Okay. Mimicry. Sometimes there's mistakes where the chromosome gets d attached wrong. Mutations. <gasps> Hello, thank you, Sanam's mom. Sorry that I'm yelling at people about Indian culture. <laughs> which I know very little about, but I do teach yoga, so it's something. 
and I don't have as nice of a voice as Sonam. You guys follow Sonam? She has the best voice on Periscope. <laughs> Talking about nasty butterflies. So they make themselves look like the bad tasting butterflies so that they don't get eaten even though they taste amazing. To be strict, this book should be called not the selfish cistron nor the selfish chromosome, but the slightly selfish big bit of chromosome and the even more selfish little bit of chromosome. To say the least, this is not a catchy title, so defining a gene as a little bit of chromosome, which potentially lasts for many generations, I call the book The Selfish Gene. We have now arrived back at the point we left at the end of chapter one. There we saw that selfishness is to be expected in any entity that deserves the title of a basic unit of natural selection. We saw that some people regard the species as the unit of natural selection, others the population or group within the species, and yet others the individual. I said that I preferred to think of the gene as the fundamental unit of natural selection and therefore the fundamental unit of self-interest. What I have done now is to define the gene in such a way that I cannot really help being right. <laughs> Hi, MediaCore. If you guys have any questions about the microphone, I know that's what the broadcast is about. I'm kind of testing the uh, cardioid mode with reading the book, and then when we're done with this chapter, we'll end. <gasps> you did become number one, Chad. Thank you. I hope you have a good day at work, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you soon, I'm sure. Hello, I saw it. Hey, look, it's Bob Ross. Anyway, I do ASMR. Okay, moving on. <laughs> what what game does this have me broadcasting on on Twitch? Is it IRL or ASMR? I wonder. It's probably IRL. Natural selection in its most general form means the differential survival of entities. Oh, hey, Ina Klein, you like this book? Good. IRL. Okay, thank you, Lou. Some entities live and others die, but in order for this selective death to have any impact on the world, an additional condition must be met. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. I appreciate that. I'm open to being wrong, too. I'm glad you are, too. This, this is how we learn. This is how we find the truth. Because philosophers don't care about being right. They care about, I mean, they care about knowing what's right. They care about the truth. It's not a matter of, like, I'm better than anybody else. I could be wrong. I, I wasn't sure if yoga was older than the Upanishads, but now I know. And now Lou knows too. Yoga in today's form is a misrepresentation. Uh, so do you think that you have to be a monk to be um, a yogi? Do I do any yoga scopes for older people? Yeah, time traveler. Actually, I am today going to be teaching my grandma who's 70... How old is my grandma? 77? Um, I'll be teaching her yoga this afternoon. So she usually lets me broadcast it, but if she doesn't, then I come home and I do my much more advanced normal practice. Uh, but if she does let me broadcast it, as she usually does, we'll be live with that in about four and a half hours. And we go about 45 minutes. We do like 30 minutes and then a 15 minute meditation. Um, it's pretty gentle, but, it, but we, I've also been practicing with her for a couple years, so it's not going to be like a first-timer class, but it's, it's very gentle, so it can give you some ideas to work with your yoga teacher, uh, whoever you have. Do we have any moderators on Twitch? If you can just block Nosferatu, and then if we can't, then I'll come in and take care of it. I think philosophy is about finding reasonable approximations of where the truth might be. I mean, that would be the first step to finding the truth, but you'd want to find the actual truth. Like, that gravity's, the, the rate of, ex, of gravity, the rate of acceleration of gravity? Am I saying that right? 9.8 meters per second squared? That's truth. I mean, that's not, like, close to the truth. No, that's, that's the truth. Not a monk. There are very many great men and women who practice it with discipline even today. I do light stretching and yoga once a week. Nice. He's banned. Thank you, Lucas. Um... There are very many great men and women. So, Lou, who would you use as an example of someone that I could learn from who's um, not misrepresenting yoga in your mind? Because to me, first of all, there's a lot of different schools of yoga. So there's like Iyengar yoga, there's uh, hot yoga, there's Bikram yoga, there's Hatha yoga with Swami Satchidananda, like I learned. There's Ashtanga yoga from, that's not philosophy, that's physics. 
Uh, but I'm talking about truth. I mean, the concept of truth. You In philosophy, we strive to find truth that's as solid as the laws of physics, I would assume. I would love to be able to prove something 100% true all the time. I'm so sick of this gray area that we're always operating in. But it's, I'm accepting it because it's the way of, of the world, apparently. A lot of today's yogis are Instagram models who also have classes and some product to sell. Um, I mean, do you think that the original yoga teachers didn't expect any kind of payment for their time and work and energy? Um, spiritual teachers throughout the ages have always expected payment for their time and work. That's why there's a thing called tithing. You learned hatha years ago? Yeah, yeah, hatha is the practice that I'm trained in. You can see down here I have integral yoga hatha here with Swami in his little undies. So cute. Let's look at his undies. Is this a misrepresentation of yoga? Because I think he's so cute in his undies. Look at his little undies. He's so cute. Swami. Rest in peace, Swami. In your little undies. I hope he's wearing those in heaven. Or wait, what do Indians believe? Reincarnation? Well, I hope whatever he came back as. Or maybe he didn't come back. His undies. <laughs> Binky, you're funny. Um, it's great. I love America. I went to Egypt earlier this year, and I couldn't wait to be back stateside. Same thing when I went to Canada, actually. I couldn't wait to be back in America. There's the concept of guru dikshine, which is like an offering given to your teacher. Right. I mean, how do you expect a teacher to eat if they're not getting paid for their work why should a teacher work for free do you think teachers in public schools should work for free and the eu i've never been to the eu no the thing is yogis used to teach it to deserved students um so it was more exclusive i mean i don't see how that's freedom i'm a big freedom lover so i think that everyone should be free to practice anything and learn any education and explore any concepts and exercises and movements and uh, practices yamas niyamas you know whether like I, you know i'm a yoga teacher but i don't agree with everything in the yoga sutras as written by patanjali and neither should you do you guys really think if you practice yoga long enough you're going to become telekine you're going to have telekinesis abilities that you'll, with your mind, be able to move things around the room because that's what yoga teaches. That's what the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali teach. It's just as ridiculous as any religious text, in my opinion. Uh, it, I'm not, it, and yoga's not even really a religious text, but it was written before science, so we have to take it for what it's worth. So what modern day yogis and yoginis, yogini is a female practitioner of yoga, it's, it, it's been thousands of years, you know, it's, we're using it how it's useful in our lives today. We shouldn't shame women for having beautiful bodies and wanting to take photos of them and put them on Instagram. I mean, what's wrong with that? Why shouldn't they be able to do that? What's wrong with modeling? I don't understand why someone's, you know, physical body shouldn't be appreciated if they want to put it out there. I don't think that means that they're any less holy than us or that they're, you know, like we're up on our pedestal, our soapbox looking down at them because they're so so much worse than us. I mean, I think that's that's wrong. I think that most yogis from all time, today and in ancient times, would say that it's <laughs> it's not helping anyone or the world or society as a whole to try to say that we're better or smarter or we know better than other people. Now, if there's actual truth, like if there's actually, like if people are practicing something that's hurting them physically or mentally or, you know, like some of the um, kriyas, like some of the kriyas you're supposed to stick a string like down into your stomach and then pull it back out. I mean, I don't think that's safe. I don't know that I would recommend anybody do that ever. But some yogis do that. And I'm not, it's not a matter of me being right or wrong, but the science might say that that's healthy or not healthy. And as long as people know that, again, they should still be free to make unhealthy decisions if they want to. But I don't really think there's anything wrong with people putting pictures of themselves on Instagram. Uh, and I also don't think that it should be exclusively only for certain students. The only reason it was like that is because there was no internet. There was no, there was no way to teach a, 
a large gathering of people, so they would choose like the one person that they wanted to teach because that was going to be the yoga teacher in the future. We don't have this problem with population and, and specification of uh, occupation and career anymore. I can be a yoga teacher, and I can be a live streamer, and I can be a philosopher, and I could go work at my local gas station if I wanted to. Like, you know, it's the modern world. We don't have to pretend like it's not to be considered real, true yogis, in my opinion. So I want to know what you guys think, too. Is a yogini that poses nude a yogi bear? <laughs> That's great, Unclean. That's really funny. I used to have a dog named Yogi Bear. <laughs> Ryan said gross. Yeah, the Kriya thing. Yeah, there's there's also the Kriya where you're, like, you're supposed to, like, suck your stomach in and, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's, like, some weird practices in yoga. But, I mean, I don't think that's probably very harmful. I'll tell you as soon as I float my cup of tea over here. Okay. <laughs> what do you love and what did you miss most about America when you left? Uh, English. Speaking English, obviously. I only speak English, so it was challenging for me to be in a French country. I had a much harder time in Montreal in Canada than I did in Egypt. And the reason is because I had three friends with me in Egypt and they all spoke English. So that made me a lot more comfortable where when I went to Montreal, I went alone and I got lost and I didn't have any Wi-Fi or signal on my phone and I couldn't figure out how to get home and I kept stopping at different gas stations and places and I couldn't understand these French people. I couldn't understand them. Their accents were so thick and I, they were like telling me, oh yeah, this street, blah, blah, blah. They're spelling, they're, no, they're just telling me the name of the street. I'm like, I don't, like, for example, there's a city called Boisbriand. Well, that's spelled B-O-I-S-B-R-I-N-A-N-D. It's like boys brand, you know, is how it's spelled. But they're like Boisbriand. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I don't know what that's, what that means. So I, I definitely, that was primarily... If I spoke French, if I spoke Arabic, if I spoke every language in the world, it would be a lot easier to communicate. The communication is, is a big problem. So that was, that was primarily the real only issue that I, that I was worried about. In Egypt, I was also a little worried about medical care. Like if I had an accident or if I got hurt or if I got sick, uh, it's a pretty impoverished country. So I probably wouldn't receive very quality medical care. And I was a little nervous about that too. And even in Canada, I don't know what would happen because it's socialized medicine. So I don't even know what they do with Americans that go in expecting to pay their bill and there is no bill because it's socialized. So other people in Canada would have to pay for my bill, which I also wouldn't like. <laughs> Ellie Kemper? I don't know who that is. Roper? Interesting point. Okay, this is the difference in thinking between Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy. I must be more precise. My pain point is the sexualization of the yogic form for personal gain that seems to corrupt the yogic culture. I think the female body is over-sexualized. If I do yoga, I'm not being sexual just because you think I'm sexy. Simple as that. Now, if I'm twerking and, like, touching myself and going, ooh, yeah, baby, and then doing yoga, like, intermittently between that, like... Yeah, that would be set over sexualization, but it wouldn't be sexualizing yoga. That would just be being sexual. I mean, and, and yoga, we use the term yoga really mostly to mean asanas, the asana practice. There is oftentimes an element of meditation. I always teach meditations in my classes, uh, and I do it in the end of my practice, but I do notice that a lot. Uh, when I watch people on Periscope that do live streaming of yoga, I don't often see them meditate very long at the end, which that makes me really sad. I think there needs to be a lot more culture of meditation in the whole world. I don't even think you, you don't even have to do asanas if you don't want to focus first on just that meditation. That's so huge. And being able to focus your mind on one object at a time is going to make your whole life. It's going to make everything in your world more successful. I don't live in Egypt. I live in America. <laughs> I live in New York. Yeah, I'm a yoga teacher. Omi, if you're uncomfortable, you can certainly go. I'm very comfortable. And if you're uncomfortable, I don't want you to be. So just leave. You can block me if you want. Van Gogh, so that's one reason I can't play Twister anymore. Wait, what now? I've never meditated. I should try it. Yes! Satan. <laughs> Get out of here, Satan. Um... Roper, meditation is awesome. I have a great book if you like to read. Or if you're just not really sure where to start with your yoga practice, this is the book that actually got me. So my that's my story, actually. I didn't start yoga in a yoga class. I actually didn't start yoga at all. I started with meditation. 
So what I did, we're all free spirits here, exactly. <laughs> you guys. Well, at least we know you guys are comfortable. Um, I read this book, Soul Centered by Sarah McLean. I'll leave it up for five seconds if you want to screenshot it. Four, three, two, one. Um, I got hair hanging off my hand here. So this is an eight week course that brings you through daily meditations. She tells it's, it's written for someone who's never meditated in their life, which I never had, or I've never done yoga, never anything. And I read this book. I started meditating every single day for, I mean, the two months of the practice. I can't remember. I want to say I did just daily meditations for a few months. I don't even remember exactly how long. And then it kind of like evolved into an interest in yoga. So then I started going to Swarupa yoga classes, which are extremely gentle yoga. And that was a really nice way to ease my way in. Then I did like some restorative yoga classes. Then I started with like the beginner and intro yoga. And um, now I'm, I've been practicing yoga for over five years, about five and a half years, five years, five and a half. What is your stance on the sexist Axe ads? Would you support Axe for making a product and selling it in an attractive way or say that's too sexualized and is not a good thing? Um, I think Axe is disgusting. On, on a separate note from the... the you, I know what you're trying to say. Conceptually, I'll, I'll address that. But I do want to say, guys, Axe is disgusting. Please stop making yourself smell like that. Is meditating the idea of doing nothing and just be yourself? That thought might help you to go into a meditative state. <laughs> Thank you, DJ Kid. <laughs> In Germany, the the beauty the of the beauty body seem to be better understood. Yeah, I've heard in Europe, um, it's a little bit less. People aren't so sexually repressed as they are in America. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Um, but I do want to say so. Axe smells bad. It's way too powerful and strong. You're putting way too much on. It smells terrible. Girls are not going to follow you around and throw themselves at you like they do in the commercials. Um, but I think as far as, my, like I said, I'm, I'm all about freedom. I think anyone should be able to market their products however they see fit. It's up to the consumer to decide whether they want to purchase that or not. So if, if they're marketing something in a certain way and no one buys it, they'll change the marketing. But if people are buying it and it's working and there's a lot of people buying it and it just keeps working and working and working, why shouldn't they do that? It's it's not the, the business's fault that the consumers want that. It's up to you to vote with your dollars and don't support companies you don't want to support. I don't buy Axe. My husband doesn't buy Axe. Not because it's too sexualized, but because it's disgusting and it's chemicals and who wants to smell that? <laughs> We don't use any scent in anything here. Even, okay, so I have these, right before this broadcast, I was putting chapstick on. And I have these two different chapsticks. They're both organic. Uh, one is Badger Vanilla Madagascar. And one is Naked Organic Lip Balm by Dr. Bronner's. And I totally prefer the unscented one, the naked one. Because this is like, it just smells so strong. Like, ugh, and it smells so fake. Now, I know it's organic, it's probably not fake, but it smells fake as heck. It smells fake. It doesn't smell good. Now, this one smells like nothing. And I love it. So does yoga and meditation go hand in hand? Yoga is basically meditation and exercise is combined. That's one way to look at it. Technically, there's eight limbs in yoga. Um, so actually, like, nonviolence is an aspect of yoga. Not lying is an aspect, or uh, being honest is an aspect of yoga. Not stealing, an aspect of yoga. So there's actually a lot more to yoga than most people realize. So asanas, the physical movements, is just one out of the eight branches. But meditation is like four of the branches. So there's like concentration. I'm actually probably going to forget this. There's enlightenment at the end. There's concentration in the beginning. I'm, I'm missing something here. Concentrations, or maybe it goes sense withdrawal. That's probably what I'm thinking as part of that pratyahara. So the sense withdrawal, closing the eyes, trying to find a quiet space, making sure that you're comfortable, you're not going to get too cold while you're meditating. Because when you sit and stop moving, you lose some of your body temperature. So you want to make sure you're cozy and bundled up just so that you can be not focusing on your body, but really going within. And then 
I'm sure I'm, I'm not even going to try to say the Sanskrit words because I haven't said them in so long. I think it's dhyana, but I might be wrong. So concentration, then meditation, where you're focused on one single object only. That's pretty much the, the goal of meditation. But then the samadhi, the actual enlightenment phase of yoga, is when you're not having any thoughts and you're in what, what she calls in this book the gap, which is like the space between your breaths. It's all very metaphysical, it's all questionable about the accuracy of this, but it's just the concept of being completely free of thought and distraction and just being fully present, not being asleep, but you're falling awake, being completely aware, and actually being a human being and experiencing what it is to just be rather than to do, a human doing. You gotta do this, you gotta think this, you gotta act this way, you gotta say that, you gotta wear this, you gotta wear a bra. You gotta... <laughs> How long should you meditate daily? It, it, everyone's gonna tell you something different. I would say 10 minutes to an hour a day is fine. Personally, I only meditate about 10 minutes a day. I used to meditate longer though, and it almost seemed like when I first started, it took me so much longer to get into that state where I could really focus and not be distracted. Excuse me, but after practicing for so long, I kind of slip into it a little bit more easily. And for me, 10 minutes is pretty much makes me feel fine. Now, let me say also that my life has been very good. So I've been with my husband now six and a half years, and we are extremely happy. We pretty much never argue or fight about anything, and we're very happy. We're completely faithful to each other. We, we don't have drama and stress in our relationship, and my friendships are amazing. I've made amazing friendships on here. I have amazing local friends that support me and are just amazing, and my business has been really successful. We're over $8,000 in the last 30 days um, from Fem Yoga alone. Hey, Shalom Martin, so good to see you. One of my longest time viewers, Klopnoff in the house. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of stress to work through. Now, if you're dealing with a lot, you might wanna sit and meditate for a whole hour. If you're new to meditation, I would recommend starting with 10 to 15 minutes at a time. You could even do it twice a day. So you could do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night. I do um, some light tanning uh, every day, every other day for about 10 minutes where I go, I have a tanning bed downstairs because I live in upstate New York and if I don't generate my own vitamin D, I can ingest some, but I really don't think it's treated the same way in the body. So I just do like very light tanning. I'm not a doctor. If your doctor tells you not to do it, it's up to you. Um, personally, I think that it's probably fine. But again, I know it's a very controversial issue. I just know vitamin D is important. That's not controversial. So get vitamin D in your system, however you're comfortable getting it into your system. But for those 10 minutes that I tan, I usually meditate during that as well. So I guess I do like two 10 minute meditations uh, just about every day. And then I usually do pretty meditative type showers. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I listen to music and just dance, have fun in the shower. Oh God, I'm probably, oh my God, I missed so many comments on, on, uh, on, Twitch, I'm sorry. Yoga got a lot more depth to it than I thought. Yeah, Roper. Thank you, Gra. You're upstate as well. Nice, nice. Hey, neighbor. It seems like you have a very libertarian approach towards this. Would you? I'm not a libertarian. I'm an anarchist, anarcho-capitalist, just to be clear. Would you agree there are some things where having a libertarian free market perspective is not a good idea, like healthcare? No, absolutely not. What you're explaining about having a clear mind is why I smoke weed. It's the core reason. When I smoke, I'm thinking about solely what I'm doing at the time. It's why it makes movies better because you're focused solely on it. Roper, have I done Christian meditation? No, I've prayed as a Christian when I was a Christian. I'm not a Christian now, but when I was. Um, Roper, I don't know that I agree with that. As someone who may or may not have participated in marijuana in my life, um, maybe a lot, maybe a lot, maybe every day throughout a portion of my life. Maybe not. I'm not going to incriminate myself because it's not legal to do that in New York. So obviously I wouldn't. Uh, but let's just say maybe I did in my mind, in my dreams. So in my hypothetical experience with being high on weed, <laughs> I know, I didn't have a clear mind. It was much harder to focus. Like if I tried to read a book, I couldn't. I couldn't keep my mind focused on that. Now, yeah, experiences were elevated, like movies, eating food, maybe even certain conversations with people. But I think that's a matter of perspective. It's the effect that the drug has on your brain. It's the same thing as having a hallucinogen. So if you don't know, uh, actually, our connection just dropped here. Let's see if I can get us back in business. 
All right, I think we're back now, guys. Let me just turn down my bitrate and see if that helps us to stay connected. Um, all right, come back, come back, come back, come back. The feed froze, it's a sign, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Roper, you're funny. <laughs> um, can somebody on Twitch just let me know we're back too? Because I want to make sure that we're we my OBS disconnected and reconnected, which is really frustrating because I thought getting faster internet was gonna fix that, and it's not. What's my favorite scoping pro? My favorite product from scoping products is definitely the Pocket Pod. This guy, it's awesome because it's the handheld like little grip, so you don't have to accidentally touch the your screen with your phone when you're trying when you're with your thumb when you're trying to walk around and hold it so I like it for walking with but then it also becomes the little tripod yeah okay thank you Lucas hey Jimmy Neutron here are some people to Amsterdam and get legally high on pot weed or hashish yes that does happen but in America it's legal in a lot of states so you don't have to go to Amsterdam anymore unless you want to for the experiment experience so it's a little and it's really light and it fits right in my purse so I just carry this. Can you buy in the UK? I imagine so. I hope he's from Canada. I know he ships to America, so I imagine he ships to the UK, but check it out. Um, if he won't, maybe I'll get it for you and then I'll ship it to you or something. We'll work it out. He will. He'll, he'll get it to you. It'll, it'll work. Is it my end or is the feed freezing? It dropped out. It should be back. So if you're not back, you might need to leave the broadcast and come back in if the picture's frozen on you. So if you can hear me, just go out and come back in. Hopefully it'll be good. I'm back. All right, cool. Lucas, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jimmy, everybody, thank you, thank you. Gotta go. Going to lunch with J&D. Oh, okay, have fun, Donna. Mwah. See you later. Are vitamin D supplements good? I'm not a doctor. I've heard. Now, again, I don't know. I've never studied it in a lab. I don't know for sure. I would love to have a mass spectrometer one day and be able to do more testing, on more real scientific testing myself because I don't trust anyone. I know my herbs. Okay, Michael, we're gonna get into the weed thing, but the vitamin D supplements, I've heard that you can't absorb the vitamin D very well when you ingest it, and that it's much more effective when you produce it from actually absorbing ultraviolet light through your skin from the sun. You don't wanna overdo it. A sunburn is gonna increase your risk for sun skin cancer. You're gonna go shopping and come back? Okay, yay, yay, yes! Vegan Doe is gonna go shopping at scopingproducts.com. She's gonna use the promo code FEMYOGA and get 40% off. She's gonna tell us what she got. And maybe she'll tell us too if they ship to the UK and then we'll know. Martin said it was me. Oh, it was on your end? Okay, good. Oh, these, Roper, these are cash cannons. Uh, I'm gonna shoot them off when I get to uh, 20,000 super hearts. What you want to sell us with huge discount? Hey, hey B-Boy, um, you don't have to buy anything over there. It's just if you want something, you can get 40% off. It's It was really just because I was showing my scoping products gear. People were asking about what microphone do I use when I'm out and about, rather than the microphone that we're testing here on this broadcast, which is this big sucker. This is a USB. Obviously, I'm not walking around the community with that sticking out of my phone. Um, so I just use my little Rode Lavalier microphone. But I don't have discount codes for anything else besides the scoping product stuff. So I just put it up because people wanted the discount code. That's all. I told my ex's parents that once, not trusting anyone. Worst mistake ever. <laughs> What other stream chat are you reading from? Actually, Periscope. Twitter Live? Does your philosophy have room for police, fire, brigade, or do you think you can privatize those as well? Yes, privatize. Everything would be private. I did a whole... You can watch some of my replays. I did... I read uh, Chaos Theory by Robert Murphy, which was uh, about private law and private defense. So I addressed a lot of that in those broadcasts. What stops an anarcho-capitalist state from going full banana reply? Well, why don't you watch those replays and then you can come back and ask me if you have any other questions. You can absorb vitamin D from supplements just fine. However, you get other benefits from the sun. Martin may or may not be a doctor. You can choose whether or not you want to go with what he's saying. I'm not saying anything because I'm not a doctor, remember? Okay. Weed. So I have had... I had a really hard time <laughs> reading books if I had smoked. It, in my head, hypothetically, I didn't ever smoke weed. Like I said, we've been over this, so this is all hypothetical. Um, and I think that, be oh, this is what I was going to say. Technically, I need to make a microphone like Flash's coat hanger stuff. What was that? I'm so confused by that. Like, because he has a microphone in his head. That That's how, like, the thing lights up and everything. And when he walks around, you can, like, he's, it's got something that, that 
makes his voice come out of there so it doesn't sound all muffled. Um, but then he had, like, the little lav mic, like, clipped up here. And I'm just thinking, like, what in the world? <laughs> Why? Why is it on the hanger? I don't understand why he doesn't just sit it up there or clip it on something. Like, why is it on that hanger thing? It's so weird. <laughs> Goes around his neck. What? No, he, like, pulled it out from it. Like, he was, like, he had the head on and everything. When he, like, pulled it, he's like, yeah, there's my microphone. And he put it back up. I was like, what the heck? My whole, I got so confused. I don't even understand. Hey, Nick. I'm not doctor, just to make clear. I did study vitamin D a little. Hard to explain details here. Yeah, Martin is very knowledgeable. I've learned a lot from him, so definitely check him out. When people start calling themselves left, right, or alt, left, right, or things like anarchist, I know these things are the names of your beliefs, but I don't really know what I am. I'm unarticulate, so I struggle to explain and think about what I truly believe. Sucks. Maybe if I researched what's what more, I'd be able to know what I can call myself. Roper, labels, like you said, labels really aren't that important. It's important to know what you believe, for sure. But it's hard to know what you believe when you're in debt, you have kids, <laughs> you're a single parent you are in an abusive situation. I mean, there's so much. You, you're unhealthy. You're bed bound. You're getting surgeries every other week. You're in and out of the hospital. I mean, there's so much that could be going on in your life. And the last thing that you're worried about is whether or not you're a liberal or an anarchist or a conservative or a neoconservative or whatever. Like, don't worry about the labels. Don't worry about politics when you have more important things to worry about, like getting yourself to a point where you can actually think clearly about any of it. I would say studying philosophy about politics is really, it's a luxury that we get to benefit from as people who aren't in and out of the hospital and, you know, aren't dealing with things that are too, too, too intense. We can actually try to solve society's problems as a whole, but this is really like a, you know, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this discussion is not like a basic necessity probably has a headset microphone and no boom to hold the other microphone. Boom? You get antioxidants from sunlight and also your body stores vitamin D from the sun so the sun is better. Ah, so like I don't know why I couldn't just clip my lav mic like right there or something rather than have it on the hanger thing. Thank you, Roper. All right, so technically marijuana is a hallucinogen. Did anybody know that? I don't know if that's still true. I'm pretty sure it's still true. That's what they taught me in health class in high school, which was a long time ago, so maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Technically, weed falls into the category of a hallucinogen. Now, hypothetically, in my dreams, I may or may not have experimented with hallucinogens in the past, mushrooms, if any, and it's the same kind of feeling where you think, oh my god, everything makes sense now. Whoa, the whole world makes sense. I've discovered the secret of life. I've discovered the secret of existence. Everything is better. I'm having deep, connected conversations with people. Same thing with, um, let's say, like ecstasy or MDMA, hypothetically. Maybe I know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't. Um, but it seems like things are enhanced and that you're better. But that's what drugs make you feel like. It's the same thing like when somebody's drunk and they think they're really strong or they think they can drive or they think that they, that person is attractive or whatever. It's just a perception change. So if, you're, if you really do think you're more focused when you're high on weed, that's, you have some pretty interesting cannabinoid receptors in your brain and maybe you just experience it differently than I do. Just saying. Okay, so we put that out there. Uh, I said I was going to finish this chapter, and we've been going for two hours and 12 minutes. I was supposed to end 45 minutes ago. Uh... <laughs> Roper said, yeah, but... <laughs> They're still talking about whether or not a gene is a indivisible particulate. Nobody cares. What if this is a hallucination and the true reality is when you're high? Nick, can you get out? Sonam, will you get him out of here? Um, DMT, dimethyltryptamine, is a hallucinogen that is released naturally in your brain every time you dream. So when you have dreams, you're tripping on drugs created by your own brain. Lorena, thank you for those super hearts. You see reality through your own chemical brain. What is real? That's true. That's true. Oh, God, my stomach. I'm having a cramp. I don't know what's happening. Am I getting my period soon? I don't think so. 
Oh, maybe I am. That would make so much sense. I've been having so many feelings and I just realized I got my period right after we got back from Egypt. And it's like, it's about time. My uterus, you guys. It's uterus day. It might be uterus day. We'll find out. I'll tell you if it's uterus day, as I always do. That's the day one of my period <laughs> for anyone who's new. We share a lot on this channel. May have some medical benefits. Cannabis surely does. Yes, I agree with that, Martin, from what I've read. If I believe I'm focused, I'm focused, and weed helps me get focused. All right, fine. I have, to, I have to pee now, because now I'm rubbing my bladder as well, and we've been here for two hours. Can we, what can we do? Let's just, let's do it. We gotta go. Today, a lot of Dead Sea stars were washed on the beach in the UK due to cold weather. Oh no, that's so sad. Yes, uterus day. All right, well, enjoy. Talk amongst yourselves. You can talk about uteruses if you like. Guys, remember, uteruses are not involved in sex, as many people think. you guys hear everything? I'm in there peeing, thinking, oh my god, that microphone. I wonder if they can hear me peeing right now. Could you guys hear me peeing? This is weird. I feel like, I feel like it's weird. Nick, are you gonna... Nick, just go away. Whatever you're gonna say, just don't say it. Um, oh, thanks, Roper. Yeah, I, uh, I've been thinking about this stuff, and I, I do this a lot, so I'm cold again. Let me put my sweater back on. It's not uterus day yet, by the way. I checked. Oh, and yes, little anatomy lesson. Because I will oftentimes go live and say my uterus hurts. And people will say, oh, did your husband hurt it? And I said, M unless my husband is a surgeon, why would he be touching my uterus? You could hear me pee. Son of the father, are you just saying that? DMT is used, also used as medicine, but is mostly illegal to study medical benefits, at least in the U.S. That's true. That's true, Martin. That's all very true. LSD was originally created to help people with um, mental illness. You heard the toilet flush. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> hey, Lise. Why does my hoodie look like this? I don't know. Hello, Toasty. <laughs> all right, all right. Now I can focus. Oh, yes. So the way the, the female anatomy, it go what? Vulva, which is the external part of the female reproductive system. Then you have the vagina, which is the internal cavity cervix so if your sexual partner is saying oh i feel it in my stomach then that means that you're hitting her cervix you're not hitting her uterus or her stomach it's the cervix and then behind the cervix that's the uterus and that's where babies are made and you're not you're not touching it so it's not sexual all right i'm just gonna put that out there <laughs> roper <laughs> oh roper you're so funny all right why are why is my forehead so wrinkly? I have such wrinkly forehead. All right, anyway, moving on. <laughs> he's The reason he's studying genes so intensely is because he wants to prove that this is the... Um, yeah, I can do that, son. Uh that this is the most basic unit of life of um, that could be selfish. Oh, really, Martin? No, I probably just took that as hearsay. Mm, but I thought I researched it before. 
but it was so long ago, so long ago, like, like eight years ago or something like that. <laughs> The idea of pregnancy freaks me out. I quiver at the thought of everything that it involves. Well, luckily, if you're a man, you don't have to worry about that too much. You can just help your wife through it. Just do everything that she wants you to do when she's pregnant, okay? And then, happy wife, happy life. I am having a good day, Toasty. How about you? Was I going to say something else? I feel like I was going to say something else. I don't know. I got distracted by the pregnancy thing. Why is he getting so detailed into this? He's using all these analogies, but now they're oarsmen. Now the genes are oarsmen. And there's rivals for seats on the boat, which are the alleles, which we already talked about all that. We've already asked what are the most general attributes of a good gene, and we decided that selfishness was one of them. But another general quality that successful genes will have is a tendency to postpone the death of their survival machines at least until after reproduction. Like praying mantises. No doubt some of your cousins and great uncles died in childhood, not, but not a single one of your ancestors did. Ancestors just don't die young. What are those weird looking guns on the floor? Those are cash cannons. So when we get to 20,000 super hearts on Periscope, I'll shoot them off. But if we don't get to 20,000 super hearts on this broadcast, you guys are gonna have to wait to see. Uh, Roper. <laughs> yeah, you, no matter how often you broadcast, it's so easy to get distracted by the comments and forget what you were talking about, but it's okay. Uh, in the beginning of this book, he talked about examples from the animal kingdom that displayed altruism or displayed selfishness. And with praying mantises, the females eat the heads of the males as soon as they can. So if the male comes near them at any point, she's going to eat his head off. So what he has to do is he has to basically, like, sneak up on her and basically rape her in order to reproduce. Selfishness is a good gene. Yes. Mm -hmm. then the selfishness, no, selfishness is a good characteristic of a gene for survival. It has to, it has to want to survive, not, not in the term, like, not of having a conscious mind, but it has to be able to take resources from the environment around it to survive, which would be considered selfish because they're taking resources from others. Um, so yeah, so she'll bite his head off either before the mating, if she catches him before he gets to start copulating, or during while they're having sex, she'll bite his head off, and he can still, they can still finish the act of reproduction. So even after she bites his head off, his body will continue to reproduce with her, and then after, if she hasn't gotten the head yet, she'll eat the head. So, do I believe in evolution? Yeah, pretty much. I haven't, I haven't heard a better proposed theory just yet. Thanks, Toasty. Your name is kind of hilarious. A gene that makes its possessors die is called a lethal gene. A semi-lethal gene has some debilitating effect, such that it makes death from other causes more probable. Any gene exerts its maximum effect on bodies at some particular stage of life, and lethals and semi-lethals are not exceptions. Most genes exert their influence during fetal life, others during childhood, others during young adulthood, middle age, others in old age. Obviously, lethal genes will tend to be removed from the gene pool, but equally obviously, a late-acting lethal will be more stable in the gene pool than an early-acting lethal. Similar to human sexual behavior. Martin, get out of here! <laughs> Insects are brutal, right? It's 8 a.m.? Oh, okay. 8 a.m.? Where are you, Lucas? 8 a.m.? Oh, you're in on the West Coast. I forgot it was so early. I was thinking it was like 11, 13 p.m. Um, all right, well, good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite, especially if it's a praying mantis female. <laughs> all right, all right, only a few more pages, we got this. Hi, Andresha. We get it, we get it, we get it. We're not, we're not talking about extending the human lifespan. This is about whether or not genes are selfish. He said he already proved that they are, so why are we still going? 
No, that was funny, Martin. That's fine. Hey, James. How are you guys? Never there in the comments that just came in. He is, well, actually, he's not in the comments yet, but hopefully he'll comment. You can follow him. He's an amazing graphic designer and video editor. He does all my YouTube work, that intro and outro video that I plan all my videos. He designed that for me, and I believe he's about to do some work with Emmy Rich, if I'm not mistaken. I recommended him to her, and she said she was going to use him, so I think he's going to be doing some work on her channel, too. Blue jeans? No, blue microphone. <laughs> it's the blue Yeti microphone. <laughs> and selfish jeans. No blue jeans. I'm wearing black pants. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lucas said, have fun and be good, chat. That's funny. I love it. Oh my god. He's arguing against his own self the whole time. Alright, well, let's just read the last paragraph. As far as the gene is concerned, the gene pool is just the new sort of soup where it makes its living. All that has changed is that nowadays it makes its living by cooperating with successive groups of companions drawn from the gene pool in building one mortal survival machine after another. It is to survival machines themselves, and the sense in which genes may be said to control their behavior, that we turn in the next chapter, which is the gene machine. I need to get $100 today for my son to be in baseball. Tim Fan, why, why didn't you save your money? What happened to your money? Do you work? What happened? This channel is about helping people reach their wealth goals, not by handing out $100 to anyone who says they need it, but by teaching people how to be smart with their money and to make more. That's what I do. All right, I'm going to leave this up for five more seconds. Scopingproducts.com. You get 40% off if you buy anything on there using the code FEMYOGA. Four, three, two, one. Hide that. All right, we've been going for almost two and a half hours which is an hour longer than I should have gone, but that's okay. We still have two more hours of content coming at you today. A little less than an hour with grandma doing yoga, probably. I sell 100 things at $1 a piece. There we go. Yes, I work, but paid bills. Well, how come your bills are higher than your savings? Do you deserve more money at your job? How long have you worked there? I mean, there's so much. We're, we're ending the broadcast now. Thank you, Time Traveler, for the super hearts. Um, Oh, like, Martin, he's talking about how old ladies are easy to rob. Am I in the merch business? That's a nice hoodie. Oh, thank you. Um, I have merch. So basically, I have merch because people wanted merch. Um, no pressure if you don't want it. But femyoga.com, if you click shop, you can get different stuff. So it doesn't have to say femyoga. You can get one that just says um, FY, or you can get one that says defy limits. And then the FY has just like a little box around it for my logo. Um, and we're making new ones too, like magnify, amplify, defy, just the word, just that word itself. Uh, but we're still developing. James is working on those designs for us right now. So we're going to get those out, I don't know, probably in the next couple of weeks. We're working on uh, getting my shop revamped first. Eric, I feel you looking at me right now. Eric, oh, should I call you after this? I don't want to do work on that. One, I don't know, 10,000 pennies. Just go to a couch store. Never mind, I'm sorry I don't get donations like you. I do manu manual labor. Um, if you do manual labor, you should make more than I do, right? If your job is harder than mine, you should make more than me, if that's what you're implying. Uh, but also, if you want to learn how to do what I do, it sounds like you don't want to do your job. You'd rather do mine, which is fine. I'm really good at it. I'm a really good teacher. I can tell you exactly how to do it. It's only $20 for my book, femyoga.com. Maybe you can get a friend to buy it for you. It's called How to Make Money on Periscope. Uh, but my guess is that because you do manual labor, you probably don't want to be a live streamer. Probably not really suited to your strengths. So that statement, that excuse that I'm, I do manual labor, I don't get donations like you, it's just a pointless statement. It shows why you probably don't have the $100 that you're looking to get. But you wanted to come on here and just ask me to give you 100 of my dollars, but you're kind of being a little rude. And... I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you get your hundred dollars. I'm trying to figure out, get to the root of the problem. Cause the problem isn't that I didn't give you a hundred dollars. The problem is that you spent all of your money and now you don't have any. So I'm just trying to help. That's all. I I've been there. We all have, I'm sure, you know, we all want to elevate together. It's not a matter of like, you don't have to do what I do. I can teach you how to do other things better. 
You can play baseball for free at the park. James! Somebody asked me for $100. He didn't just directly ask anyone for $100. He just said, I need $100 so my son can go to baseball. Which oftentimes, that's oftentimes, now I don't know this guy. He just came in here. I don't think I've ever seen him before. But that's often the, the, the uh, cry of a, an addict. I don't know if you're an addict. I don't know you. You just came in here. I really don't know. But it's interesting that oftentimes, like when you go to Egypt, they all the, the people are like, oh, we need food. We need food. It's like they want to say, oh, my son, like I can't be a good parent to my kid unless you give me money, which is kind of makes no sense. You know, now I don't know that he's an addict or anything. I don't know why his money is gone. Um, but oftentimes when you say that you need money because you want to help your kids, it's kind of like a, a smoke screen and there might be something deeper going on here. Um, don't, you shouldn't just give someone money because you feel bad, because I do feel bad for your son, but I'm not feeling bad for you. I want to know what happened to your money, because $100 is really not too difficult to hold on to. Now, I don't have children, so I know it's a lot harder to hold on to money when you have children, but I also know people who do have children that have plenty of savings for their children, because they work really, really, really hard, and they don't take less pay than they're worth. So make sure you're not getting paid less than you're worth either. Because if you're working really hard and you're not getting paid enough, you should be getting paid more and you shouldn't be settling for less. So maybe go start being an independent contractor, work for yourself with the manual labor, start your own business, or maybe ask for a raise or pick up another job. I don't know. Set up some type of uh, passive income that you can get without even having to, to work on it actively. <gasps> Whoa, Taylor, hello! Why does it cost so much to play baseball? A hundred bucks probably isn't too much to because then they, they get like the uniform, all the practices, they have to pay the coaches and stuff. I used to start out each month by trying to pay down a credit debt of about $3,000 more than I made. Yeah, I think it's a good challenge to um, figure out a way to pay, if you're in debt, pay off debt and save money while staying on top of your bills. That's like the first step to getting free from debt. Because you don't want to just be paying your bills and have zero dollars. I mean, that's even worse than being late on your bills and having a little bit of money if you need it. Now, if you have no money, is paying for your son to go to baseball a good investment of that money? I don't know. Is he an amazing baseball player? Is he going to use that to make money one day? Maybe, but like James said, you can play baseball for free at certain places. Or maybe you can just go to the school and tell them, hey... I don't have the hundred bucks. Can you, how can I get a scholarship for my son? How can my son earn his way to a scholarship to teach him that people don't just give you everything you want in life. You have to work for it. It is earned. Just like I earned every single sponsorship here uh, by working hard and doing my job well. Just go to baseball dress like you're supposed to be there and fake it. <laughs> just make your own uniform now. Work is getting in the way of listening to the scope. Nikki, I love that comment so much. Comment to the broadcast. Uh, I recently started investing in cryptocurrency and saw some nice profits. Oh, really? Recently you started and you're seeing good profits? That's interesting. How recently? Um, I, I got some crypto, I think, back in August of last year. And then I sold it, I think, in December or so. Uh, maybe it was January. No, I think it was December. Uh, I made pretty good profit, too. I think I made, like, a 200% return, but it was only $50. So... I made $200, but that's fine. A good rule of thumb is to have an ex at least an extra month's worth of money in savings. Yeah, yeah, that's what my grandma taught me when I was younger. She said, you want to be earning your rent in a week, at, at, at least. Obviously, you want to be earning more than you need to be making. But she said, if you're not earn whatever you earn in a week, that's how much you can afford to pay for rent. Because the other 75% that you make goes towards other things, bills, gas. Well, I guess gas could be considered bills. Let's just say bills in general. But also, like, sometimes someone has a birthday or a housewarming party or a barbecue or wants to go to the movies and you want to have a little bit of extra money. But it's important to go without luxuries and without and, and explain to people, I... I know it's your birthday. I really love you. I want to hang out with you. Let's spend time together. Why don't you come over? Uh, you, why don't you come over and have dinner with our, our family? Maybe you can spare an extra plate of food for them. But be really smart. Don't let people make you feel like you should be spending your money more than you should be. Tell the kids that want to play baseball that $20 is $20. Yeah, tell the kid to go out and earn 100 bucks. I bet if, if he just went door to door around your neighborhood, depending on where you live, he might come back with more than 100 bucks. <laughs> he could just say, hey, 
I want to play baseball. My dad can't afford it. Can you help me? I'll mow your lawn. I'll shovel your driveway. I'll wash your dishes. I'll watch your cat when you go on vacation. I mean, there's a lot. Buy everything secondhand? Yes. Actually, this um, microphone was not used, but almost everything I buy is almost always used. Um, certain things, it's kind of like you, the used price is so close that it's like, what even is the point? You can't buy anything new anymore. This uh, laptop, this Asus laptop that I'm using, was retail $1,500. I got it on eBay for $750. But OBS keeps crashing, so I hope that's not. I think that's a Windows 10 OBS incompatibility. So I'm thinking now that it did crash on this broadcast, I'm going to have to figure out a new software to use. So if you know software that rivals uh, OBS, let me know. I'm looking for new software. Or play soccer, baseball is dumb. <laughs> what about low-paying jobs? Lots of regional airlines pay just over minimum wage and are limited to work hours. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you asking me for the kid to go to, to work that job for baseball? Or are you asking me... Are you asking me about something about that? I also earn my living reselling old items. Yeah, my husband's pretty good at that. He likes to sell old stuff. He buys old stuff. He sells it. Craigslist. However, I started like a couple months ago and I've been investing in a coin that wants to change the music industry. Interesting. What's it called? Music coin? La La coin? No, no. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, if you guys have stuff that you think I should invest in, let me know. Direct message me. Whisper me on Twitch. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. Femme Yoga Taylor. I have a YouTube channel, Fem Yoga, where I have all my old content, so you can see all my philosophy, all my ASMR, all my books, all my guests and split screens, and it's called Tao. Oh, interesting, like Taoism? Very interesting. Okay, I'm hungry. We've been doing this two and a half hours. Hey, Dave, I'm going to come back for another two hours later. The next time you see me will be at 3 p.m. New York time with my grandma doing yoga. Uh, if you don't see me, then that just means she didn't feel like broadcasting today, and I'll be back after I get home from that. Um, maybe with yoga, but it's also Oreo day, and I was thinking about potentially going and getting an Oreo treat and scoping myself eating it and seeing if maybe we get featured because it's Oreo day. Yeah, Kayvon, you paying attention? Just kidding. Unless you are, you can come in and say hi, because you've never come into my broadcast and it makes me very sad. He didn't come in. If you don't know who that is, Kayvon is the CEO of Periscope. And he doesn't know it yet, but we will be, we will be best friends. We'll be friends. We'll, we'll meet. <laughs> we'll meet one day. <laughs> That's, let's start with meeting. <laughs> Quad stack Oreo. No! Have a great Oreo day. Thank you. You too, Martin. Still confused about being selfish or not. I'm getting, I know, right? I feel like he barely talked about selfishness or altruism at all. But at least we got to page 50. Or page 46. I really don't know when we're going to get into the altruism and selfishness. Oh, here we go. Two chapters from now, something called aggression. Stability and the selfish machine. Oh, yeah, son, I didn't see that. Wait, let me switch it back on stereo. You might want to turn your volume down for a second. I'm going to switch my mic to stereo. You know, I think, does it need to be a little bit quieter, too? I don't know. I feel like it has a lot of background noise. What if I just turn it down? Just a smidge. Just a little, just boop, like that. I forgot I can't hear it. <laughs> oh yeah, that seems better. Oh, wait. Right? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. It is Oreo day. done. We tested our microphone. I hope you had a good time. I had a good time. Roper, son of the father, that was for you. James, a DIY Oreo stuffing cooking scope. 
I'm not doing that. I'll probably just go get something that's Oreo based out in the community. Is that mic binular like 3D sound from one ear to the other like ASMR? Yes, it's stereo. So that's when I go over here. You should hear it alternating from one ear to the other in your headphones. Oh, Dave, that was, it was a request. It's an ASMR technique that I do. Lou. <laughs> uh, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed. You put your headphones in to check. Okay, good. Emily, hello. Glutino makes good gluten-free Oreos. Interesting. Which, yes, it's the Blue Yeti. Blue Yeti microphone in the blackout model. Do, 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 do. Yay! Okay, well, thanks for being here, guys. I'm gonna go eat some lunch. Oh, Roper just put his headphones on. Hold on. My new old mic sounds great. Is it old? It's not old. This one's not used, actually. This was this is brand, brand new. Brand spanking new. I think. I assume it is. <laughs> I should do it more often. Oh, I do ASMR often. It does sound good, right? Yes. Um, I do ASMR pretty regularly. You want to do ASMR tonight? I can do... I'm sorry, Emily. I've been here for two hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> I have to eat food. I'm hungry. Yeah, you could listen to it all day. Um, well, maybe I'll whisper more of this book tonight. Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand, after yoga. Sound good? I'll probably be doing it kind of early for sleeping, but you can always watch the replay when you're ready to go to sleep. <coughs> I almost coughed into the microphone. Pleasure, thank you for following me on Twitch. It's lunchtime for Dave, it's lunchtime for me. So today, let's recap. We did an unboxing. We got the Real Techniques Beauty Makeup Sponges. <gasps> you got a new phone, Emily? What'd you get? Quick, brag about it, quick. We got this iPhone cord. What, I unplugged my phone from it? What do I do with my phone? Hmm, interesting. Did I put it in here? Yes, I did. iPhone cord. And we got the Blue Yeti microphone, which I was just using. I got it in the blackout model. Boom. Hey, Neek. And we tested it. We read another chapter from Richard Dawkins's The Selfish Gene, and I'll be back later on. Oh, and we talked about the scoping products, how I get 40% off. If you go to scopingproducts.com and use uh, the promo code FEMYOGA, you'll get 40% off. Split the scope when you change formats, just saying. If you do ASMR and yoga, oh yeah, no, we won't, we won't do it together. <laughs> Google Pixel 2 XL. Um, Jackie of all trades has the Google Pixel 2 and she has a lot of trouble broadcasting from it. So if you broadcast, Emily, let me know if it works. And actually let Jackie know if it works, if you figure out any little tricks that can help her. Hey, good morning, Unique. You're still waiting for UPS. Oh, okay, so it's not there yet. All right, all right. Your favorite Twitch person ever. Thank you, Roper, it's so nice. I'm still pretty new to Twitch, so I'm learning I'm learning the ropes on there, but we got our first ever Twitch sponsor the other day. His name is about to pop up here, right there, Veralik. He was our first ever sponsor from Twitch. He went over to femyoga.com, he clicked support, he supported the channel. He's the first and only Twitcher to ever do that for me. Yeah, James said the XL is buggy. Uh-oh, Emily, good luck. I think to my left, I don't see her picture. All right, I'm gonna go, for real this time, I swear. Thanks for watching. This has been a moment in time with Taylor. I hope to see you guys back in three and a half hours. Three? Four. I said four and a half earlier, but I was wrong. It was five and a half earlier. Or five. Yeah, it's... No. No. 
No, I was right earlier, and I'm wrong now, but now I'm correct again. Three and a half hours, I should be live with my grandma doing yoga. If not, I'll be back afterwards doing uh, either yoga here by myself, or I will be eating some Oreos somewhere in the community. And I'm really, really nervous about public broadcasting, so make sure you come and support me, because I feel so weird broadcasting in public. Thank you, son of the father. You're nice, too. Bye, Miko. She needs to activate. Yeah, I don't know. Jam said that it's buggy, Emily. So, hi, G Slice. Goodbye. I said two. I forget what we're talking about. I said two. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> How many hours? So, 3 p.m. New York time. However many hours that is from now. It should be three and a half, but who knows. Uh, and that's going to be about an hour. And then, if I am in public, come see me. We'll hang out. It'll be fun. It'll be nervous, but it'll be fun. And if you're on Twitch, I when I do public broadcasts, I don't do it on Twitch because I only have one phone so with data on it so I just do it on Periscope if you want to follow me there Fem Yoga Taylor you're also awesome sauce toasty titties <laughs> sorry I had to say it ah okay no fear thank you James you're awesome and James will get it up on YouTube eventually too if I do it from my phone so he's awesome you're awesome Emily's awesome this has been a moment in time with Taylor Emily James Roper Toasty Eric Eggbot Time Traveler Sonam, Coin Show, Craig, Lorena, k &M, Mike, thank you for all the super hearts. Thank you for the hearts. Peter, Chad, Alexis, who's this? Coley, Steph, and Wendy, thank you to you. I don't know who you are, but it's nice to meet you, and we're going to talk about everything. You're going to review later? Wait, review what? Um, if you want to write any reviews for my channel, Fem Yoga, I will put them on my success stories at femyoga.com. You can send them to me on Instagram or Twitter or wherever. All my contacts on there. Everything's on there. Go check it out. Support the channel. Love you. Platonically. Bye. I swear I'm really leaving this time. I swear. I know you can still hear me, but hey. 11,000 super hearts. Wait, that's one cash cannon. Wait. We can shoot off one of them. You guys, it has four times more cash than it's ever had before. Get ready. Get ready. Making it rain. Oh, God. It's too much money. Oh, wait, because I have it tilted. Wait, 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 wait. No, that was... It was a misfire. It was a misfire. I can't tilt it back like that because it's like gravity driven. Reload, reload. I'll angle it down. Ready? Is that money okay? That money didn't want to come out. Yes! So how much is this? $800. Boom. Misfire. Anticlimax. Yeah, it was. The timing! Yeah. <laughs> Make it rain sideways, right? That was fun, right? It's not fun to clean it all up, though. I'm glad it all went on the laptop. Raining cash flow. Yes.